Hey everybody, so after the big argument about uh, the rogue having to take away their sneak attack because the GM thought it was too powerful, they therefore went on to, to go on this massive rant and say some outlandish shit like barbarians not allowed to rage because like resistance is too strong. Uh, you know, uh, wizard, all spellcasters have to use spell points, just no spell slots allowed. Uh, no action surge. Uh, yeah, no a action surge uh, at level 10, not level one, uh, level two. <laughs> that was... And I think that that's really where I had to tap out. Uh, so sessions canceled. <laughs> a wild shape for druids. No, wild, yeah, see, is that really a bad thing? Though? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it is. <laughs> okay. This is where uh, Brett inserts the quote of me being like, I just want the tree wizard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just like the fucking flight of the Valkyries playing <laughs> Josh's Vietnam flashbacks. We don't have to do this every time. We just don't. <laughs> Incorrect, don't sir. <laughs> That's funny. We don't have to. I, I, no. It's not. It's not funny. <laughs> I don't know. We're kind of laughing. <laughs> Laughing at my pain. Mm. Fucked up. All right. Well, welcome back to another episode of the Sessions Canceled Podcast, everybody. Uh, it's me, Isaiah, dying inside slowly because of the heat. Uh, I'm here with Josh. Yeah. Look at him. All tuckered out. And I'm here yeah. with Matt. Also tuckered out. <laughs> Very tired. <laughs> We're all I'm just fucking tired, exhausted. Though. I'm not tired. <laughs> It's been. I literally just said he's tuckered out. And <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm not, though. You just assumed. You just said, yeah. Or was that Matt? That's probably Matt. That was Matt. That was fucker. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Wow. You got to get your game face on. Uh, hashtag high school musical reference. Um, get your game on. Get set to get deck, nerds. No, not, <laughs> not the same. No. Oh. oh no! Oh oh! Oops! No! Wrong reference. Okay. Absolutely. To be honest, I don't even think I got that reference right. Uh, I believe <laughs> that was a toy ad. No, that was Yu-Gi-Oh! -Oh GX. Oh my god! Oh, I that's right. <laughs> oh, no, my, yeah. Get your game on. No, <laughs> oh, um, no, no. Isaiah was talking about High School Musical. Good try, though, Matt. You you tried. What? No, I was talking about Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. I know. I said. Isaiah, that's what was, he just said. That's oh what he just said. Fucking God. Oh God. Why do I even talk sometimes? <laughs> already, already a train wreck of an episode. Let's go. Holy shit. Why do I even talk? I don't even. All right. You know. You know. It's fine, I guess. It's all right, bud. It's okay. Oh, I'm sad now. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Josh, you know what might make you feel better? What? If you tell the listeners what they uh, where they can follow us, I like that you stumble over that Fuck. sentence every oh time. Oh my god, I fucked no, it up. No, no, oh come on, god. let him take that W. That was pretty good. No, no, I know, no, like I mean, you mostly said it. Well, you sort of, kind of said it right, but the problem was that you like halfway through the sentence, you're like, wait, no, other sentence, wait, no, the third sentence, wait, no. Anyway, yeah, yeah, you can hit follow or subscribe or whatever you're currently listening. Uh, that's what you could do. And you know what? If you're on Spotify, drop a rating. That'd be nice. Yeah. yeah. Or something extra. All right. Good Christmas. Christmas. Very crimbo. Ole. <laughs> Ole? Have you not seen the I I'm I'm definitely posted it. It's the the Gargura VTuber picture. And it's her in a sombrero with a mustache. <laughs> and she's got a bag that says crimbo gifts, and it's her just <laughs> saying Ole. <laughs> I have not seen that, but it's all right. like I posted every year at Christmas. It's my favorite picture. Oh, actually, wait, no, never mind. Yeah, yep. yeah. I, I posted that, and then I post the the devil ho from Monster Hunter doing yeah. the oh, holy shit at Christmas, Christmas. Mer yeah. Christmas. Yeah, yeah. I love that picture too. I love that one. Yeah, that was good. But uh, yeah, boys and grills. Uh, it is episode four of the uh, much anticipated. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> Hot takes series. I don't even know if it's episode internet. four. It is absolutely episode four. That word, that much I do know. I'm not seven. that dumb. Part four? Okay. I'll take the word for it. Yeah, yeah. No, it is part four. It's not episode uh, four. It's part four, just to be. Part four, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, the mini series where we, where I mainly go through the internet's uh, dredges 
and pick up the the spiciest, dirtiest, most vitriolic takes in the hobby. And uh, this time, I actually yeah. fun fact for for you, Isaiah. It is in fact episode one hundred and four. Oh, nice! So right it's now. part four of hot takes, episode one hundred and four. Nice. nice. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this time, however, uh, we went out to you know our small but loyal community to to see their takes and the takes of their other players or friends or. DMs or what have you, and we actually managed to pull in uh, over 30 responses, which is way more than I expected. <laughs> uh, for the sake of this, uh, we'll be keeping this anonymous unless, I don't know, you signed your name. I know literally one person who did <laughs> sign their name in their response. Uh, so I don't know, I guess you're getting a call out, but... I mean, um, no, we should probably still flag enough. them online. Uh, I think that so the funniest thing about doing this and knowing our friends is it, I can like read a take and be like, oh, I know who the fuck wrote this. I know exactly. I, who was this say, is. I feel like, I feel like mm-hmm. there's going to be a couple of those where that's the case. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some people uh, uh, got the assignment a little more than others. Some of these takes are, are Not, less takes. spicy and more sh- like, you know, cotton candy sweet, but that's fine. Uh we appreciate the responses. Some of them are wild. Let me tell you. Good. <laughs> there are a few like wild ones in there. There are some unhinged ones. I know for a fact what a Matt's players posted a take. Oh boy. It is actually probably the most <laughs> out of pocket take here. <laughs> really? Is it the one you showed me? Yeah, 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 I oh had to. God, I had yeah. to. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it it is the most out of pocket take we have. It's not the spiciest, but it's the most fucking like I'm sorry, what? Okay. Okay. Yep, yep. It was a it was a good time. <laughs> All right. Okay. I think when I told him he confirmed that it was him. He's just like he's like, "You don't know, Matt. It's anonymous." And I told I shared it with him. He's just like, "Damn." <laughs> yeah. No, oh, shit, that is me. Um <laughs> Yeah, I, I think some of them I actually, it's funny. Some of them I agree with. Some of them I'm like, no, nah, I don't think you, you're wrong. And some of them I'm just like, eh, it's okay. Uh, so it's for the okay. sake of this, uh, we got n- not really rules, but like uh, we got a little system. Uh, for each of these, uh, where we, once we once we come to a final verdict, we will consider them either a W take, a meh take, or an L take. And we will tally them up at the end and see how many we have of each. We're probably not going to get to all of them. Uh, fair warning, because there's a lot and we ramble a lot. Yeah. Uh, so oh, I, I forgot we were supposed to... to get the cringe button or the bass button. Damn. Cringe. Oh, we were supposed to get the cringe button. Oh. Cringe. I'll just cringe. <laughs> uh, I expect us to get to like 25 because we got uh, the last time we did this, we had about 27 and we like <laughs> just cusped the two hour mark on that one. So. I'm expecting it to hit something similar to that. Um, I have compiled all of our takes in a, another handy dandy spin the wheel so I can spin the eponymous wheel and we will get uh, some results. Uh, I love the wheel. I also love the wheel. It makes me very happy. Um, I even got a custom. So fun fact about the wheel. I, I made this uh, earlier today, like just compiling all the takes. And I was like, okay, nice and save. And the spin the wheel.io, the place that I used to make these wheels, last time I did it, it like saved it and I could like go in and pull it out whenever I needed to. Um, the old wheel is gone for Hot Takes 3. <laughs> and uh, I saved this, the, that wheel that I made and it deleted and it was gone. And I, so I had to remake it. <laughs> and it made me late for work and I was very annoyed about it. But it's fine. It's fine. Uh, Pretty yeah. sad. Yeah. Um, obviously, uh, if you are listening to this, just quick forewarning, and I wrote this in the responses, uh, your take is subject to roasting. Um, do not get salty about it, please. Uh, because if you do, I will call you a goober to your face, most likely. If you do uh, get salty about it, though, please get salty about it in the comments for the engagement. Thank true, you. true. Get salty about it in the comments, and I will comment in person that you are a goober. With like a heart to know that I don't really mean it, but I do kind of mean it a little bit. You know, <laughs> I was like, "This take yeah, was you- trash." Winky face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, boys, you ready? Want to get into the first yeah. one? As ready as we're gonna be. All right. 
Uh, so we'll, we'll do a, we'll, we'll sort of round robin it. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, so I will, I will begin. Yee. What are we round robining? I thought we were all replying to or responding to. I for like reading it if you want. I... What? <laughs> all right. Take number one. <laughs> You are the host. You Sorcerers are the and warlocks should either have some sort of con scaling or at least be able to spin hit dice to either get spell slots back or potentially cast multiple spells per turn. Something like one uh, one hit die per spell level plus a concentration check or the spell fizzles. That could be, that could uh, be interesting. I will, I'll paste this just for the sake of like. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm kind of one of the people who I I hate the fact that we have so many fucking charisma casters in 5e and I really would like source either sorcerer or warlock to swap over to con based. It just I guess it makes more sense for me for sorcerers to be con based because the said the power comes from within them. But like and then also it's like, well, charisma also makes sense. And I don't know. I, I bounce back and forth. But they Honestly, have so metal magic, so I don't know about the whole hit dice thing. Maybe maybe well, so warlock. <clears throat> I, I've brought this up in the past. I actually, I actually wrote a whole little document about this that I shared around to a few of the, the, the groups that were in of uh, overcasting. So if you're out of spell slots, you can burn hit dice and HP uh, to cast your spells. Um, and like every time you do, not only you take some damage, you burn some hit dice. And it's just a, another good way of using hit dice because people don't short rest enough anyway. Uh, and it helps True. keep ca casters in the fight because, you know, you do like, especially if you're doing a dungeon and you're like really tapped, uh, you can still be in it and it works also very well for warlocks because they can only cast the highest level. So they burn through the hit dice really quick, which is fun. Um, it didn't end up getting picked up in any of the games I was in at the time, but I really liked it. I was proud of it. I agree with this. This is a W take for me, dog. And, uh, no, I absolutely think uh. sorcerers should be con casters. I... Personally, I think we should have two casters per um, like spellcasting trait. So we have two for uh, two for wisdom where with cleric and druid two for intelligence. I think warlocks should be an int caster personally. Just on, on the like the flavoring of how you are like delving into your eldritch knowledge and shit. To me, that's int. I don't know. It's not charisma. Um, but then we would have three int casters. Oh, sure. We do have Artificer. I don't yeah. take them into account. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Four, four Charisma Casters is ridiculous. I, I genuinely feel like at times that they, they just throw them in Charisma because they don't know what else to do with them. There's also three Wisdom Casters, by the way, because Ranger uses Wisdom. They do. That's yeah. right. Yeah. <clears throat> hmm. I remember in the play test they had the one warlock where like I don't know choose. why they did it this way where it's like yeah well no it's not even you choose it's like if you pick pact of the chain you get wisdom if you pick pact of the tome you get no, intelligence it was, if you pick um, pact of the blade you get charisma but it's like why not just let me pick no it was own? I think it was each pact could choose one option or another like it oh, was like one pact of the, the blade uh, was like int or charisma and then chain was mm -hmm. like charisma or whatever I think that's what it was I think. Okay. I don't remember. They threw that one out pretty quick. That's somebody yeah, fact that check that for us. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, side note: you could also sort of argue barbarian is a wisdom caster because if you get uh, totem barbarian, you use wisdom. Yeah. Um, you know what's weird? Uh, really? My yes. Fucking my one of my buddies was telling me in Baldur's Gate three, uh, barbarians casting goes off of their charisma instead. I, Why? Don't, I don't know I don't about know. that. I would have to look into that, but I'm skeptical <laughs> of that statement. Yeah. But, um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, this is like, I don't know. This is pretty meh to me. I don't think warlocks should be concasters. That feels odd. And I don't think warlocks need any kind of extra mechanics to change the way their sort of spell slot stuff works. I think they're fine being their own thing. Um, but I don't hate the idea of a, of a sorcerer burning hit dice to like upcast or cast more stuff because that is sort of in theme for a sorcerer mm. of like I'm sort of overcharging, over tapping my innate magical abilities. I'm stressing my body. It's kind of like a psionic sort of thing. Um, yeah. And if I remember correctly, the talent 
in MCDM RPG, MCDM, yeah. it literally does exactly that. So yeah. nice, I love that. It's 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 on brand, it's on genre. So I think it's a fine idea for a sorcerer. I don't think it works for a warlock. And the con scaling mm-hmm. thing is like I don't know, maybe I guess I'd have to play test it. I'm kind of meh on that one. I don't hate it. I don't love it. Okay, we got we got a meh take. What do you think, Matt? Yeah, no, I think it's, it's a good take. It's is um, it a W again, a meh or an L, Matt? Follow uh, the rules. <laughs> yeah, I guess meh. Because I agree with some I, of it, but also I'm kind of wherever you are. I think that was a W take. Uh, <laughs> you know, it'd be like that sometimes. But I've been out Definitely not a hot take. Nice, because, no, not a hot take. It. Good opinion. Hot take, though. No, calm, not a hot take. Calm, oh. calm take. Yeah. All right. We got uh That was actually pretty quick. Nice. We actually probably yeah, might get through all these. Let's, let's get Don't a say spicy that. one. Don't say that. Because there's going to be one of these that's going to send me into a spiraling. Spiraling. Why is that hard, so hard to say? Spy, Spiral. Spiraling rage. And I'm going to go on for 20 minutes. I can't wait till it's like. Again, Druid should just be wizard so clear. Don't. God, please no. You know, bro, please no. If, like I I dude, wait, actually just side tangent. I uh-huh. love Chris Perkins. I uh-huh. love the man. Uh-huh. Uh but God, what he said about like less classes actually got me fucking tilted. I Where he's like, if you think about it, barbarians could just be a subclass yeah, of fighters. I, if I, you I, think about I it, know. Druze could just be a subclass of clerics. And I'm like, Chris, come on, man. Here's the thing. Stop. He he's right and like He's right and wrong. Let's put it this way. I don't think that's true of the current game, but I do think there's a version of D&D out there where that is true. Because well, I think a lot of the OSR um, games do that nowadays. A lot like of the them, yes. Ones. Well, so you could also do a thing that's like, for example, uh, Stars Without Number and Worlds Without Number have a system where you take two separate classes. So there's only three classes. There's... Uh, in Worlds Without Number, it's Warrior, Expert, and I think it's just called... Might just be Magic User. Um, uh, but you can take an Adventurer class where you take partial something and partial of another thing. So you take the Adventurer class and you could be a partial Warrior, partial Expert, and then you're like kind of a Ranger. Or you could take a like Warrior, Magic User, and then you could do kind of like a Cleric thing or like a Wizard or a Paladin thing. Uh, so there's a universe in 5e where you have the base four. So you have fighter, fighter, wizard, cleric, rogue, and then the base four expand out into larger trees of the other stuff. That's sort of the less baseline. So, you know, there's a universe where a fighter becomes a barbarian or a fighter becomes a paladin. There's a universe where the cleric becomes a druid or the cleric becomes Maybe cleric could also become a paladin or cleric could become a wizard or, or like or maybe a sorcerer or something like that. You know, there's a universe where that makes sense. The game right now, though, that would not make sense. You would need to make drastic changes for that to, I think, work. So yeah, I, I agree. I think there I think there is a right home for it. It's just not in 5e, not in the current version of 5e. Like there may be some version out there. Yeah, I mean, also, I'll, I'll, I'll go. I'll say it. I, I think prestige classes were pretty dope. Like, I kind of want to see those come it, back. It would essentially be something kind of like that. Yeah. Oh, but the subclass system right now just doesn't change your character enough to justify a cleric being a subclass of a druid or vice versa. You know what I mean? Like subclasses just don't do enough to your character to justify that. You know, same thing. On same thing. Like fighter, like barbarian being a subclass of fighter. I feel like a subclass, an ability like Rage, wouldn't be given as a subclass ability in 5e the way it currently works. Like, that feels like too big of an ability to give as a subclass ability. So, how would you, you know? That's it. I get what he meant, but, yeah. I'd have to have... I get you, but no. Yeah, I get you, but no, for now. Okay, uh, that, nice. That, no asterisk. No asterisk, mm-hmm. yeah. Side note, Shadow <laughs> of the Demon Lord kind of does that. Oh. Kind of. Oh, yeah, because you got to take, Not like, exactly you, you sort of kinda. class into other things, yeah. So, yeah, you start as you start as a novice path, which is either fighter, uh, fighter, I don't think they, I think they call it priest, fighter, priest, thief, or 
uh, magic person, uh, and that's your novice path, and then you get an expert path, and the expert paths are more specific. So, like, druid might be an expert path, and then, you know, there might be, like, a holy warrior type thing, or, like, a ranger might be an expert path, and then you get master paths, which are even more specific. So there's, like, magical gunslinger is, like, a master path, and then there's, like... Uh, magic, uh, there's like a spell blade type thing, you know, stuff like that. So Shadow of the Demon Lord kind of does that. If there, if there's like a, I don't know if this is in Shadow of the Demon Lord because I haven't read it, but pretty much any game where arcane gunslingers is a thing, I'm in. Hashtag Joey Diaz, I'm in. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it is a thing in that game, yes. Let's go. <laughs> Just think about the, you don't drink, but you suck toes for breakfast, I'm in. <laughs> It's really out of pocket without context. <laughs> it is, but I kind of love it. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I love know. Joey Diaz. Anyway. Go. All right. Time to spin the wheel. Boy, I hope it's a new car. No. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, it says... Dragons should have vulnerability to an element opposite their own. In fact, more creatures need vulnerabilities or weak points. It makes for high moments of gameplay. Once again, I agree, but not particularly spicy. Um, although I, I don't actually agree with the top part of it. Um, the dragons bit? Yeah, I, I don't agree with that, but uh, the uh, we've said it on podcasts several times, right? Like the vulnerabilities thing. Come on. Like you have this thing Hold that on, you just refuse oh. to interact with. Dragons should have vulnerability to opposite. In fact, more creatures... I, I kind of actually like that, though. The dragons are vulnerable to the opposite. Yeah, I like, like that idea. You would probably have yeah. to rebalance to so, account for that, but yeah, I'm into yeah. it. Fire dragons being weak to old. Yeah, wait, I'm trying to think, because then, like, will it ha would it be cold damage or would it be cold from, like, a uh, silver dragon? Uh, uh. Yeah. Mm. I don't know, Matt. That's too many steps. I didn't think that that's far. Too many. Ahead. Yeah, you know, just cold damage. Just, just make it make life easier. I, I I think that's a fun idea. I mean, yes, I think yeah. the second half of it, which is that more creatures in D and D need vulnerabilities or weak points, definitely true. Like that mm -hmm. system overall needs attention in some fashion. I don't know what it would be, but it needs something. Yeah. But. The dragons half of it, where dragons should have a vulnerability else opposite their own element, a la like a Pokemon thing. I don't hate that. There might be a world where that works. Mm -hmm. I'd have to. I'd have mm. to. I think. I think the dragon thing would work better if it wasn't just flat vulnerability. I think that's part of the problem with the vulnerability and resistance system is that the vulnerability resistance system is binary. It's you have it or you don't. If you have vulnerability, you take double damage. If you don't, you don't. And that's it. Mm. There's no granularity to it. It just is on or off. And mm. so I feel like something that could help is instead of it being a vulnerability, it could be like how trolls are in 5e, where trolls regenerate. If you hit them with fire damage, they don't regenerate. So yeah. This is off the top of my head, but for example, if you're fighting a red dragon and you hit it with cold damage, it would probably have to be a threshold, right? It couldn't be like five mm -hmm. cold damage or something. It'd probably have to be like you hit it with a certain amount of cold damage per turn or whatever. But if you hit the red dragon with cold damage, its breath weapon recharge instead of a five or a six goes to a six. So it's less likely to be able to use its breath weapon. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's that would work better rather than just flat out vulnerability because double damage. The problem is that double damage is a lot. That's like a huge swing in your favor. Yeah, and player players already like fucking demigods, right? They like already do already... so much damage that yeah. double damage is crazy. But if it was like, again, if it worked like trolls where it was sort of a debuff, um, and there's mm -hmm. a couple of monsters that do that in 5e, where if you hit them with a specific damage type, it like affects them in a different way. It makes them slightly less good. That <laughs> I think you could do and would be cool. And like more the, of uh, that in the game across the board, I think would be fun. Yeah, that's why I like the MCDM monsters, like they're legendary monsters. Whenever they use their legendary resistance, they take a penalty. So like some of them will be like, the creature moves slower or it loses right. a certain chunk of health or it can't do the spell it normally does. Yeah, something so. along those lines. Yeah. You know, or the fact that zombies can't regenerate if you hit them with radiant damage. Like, that's another good one. Yeah, yeah, that's another one. 
Shit yeah, like I mean, that. if you put it <clears throat> if you put it into that context, I actually do agree with that. I think, yeah. Um, honestly, if if what I would make me happy is if if what was implemented was what we talked about forever ago, right? Where dragons just had more stuff to them that in uh, reinforced the fiction of what dragons are, being like these kind of primordial elemental demigod things. Yeah. Mm. So like. Let's say like you used Cone of Cold or something that did like a certain amount of cold damage. You could, for example, turn off their um, layer actions. Right. Yeah. Right? You like could let's say you're fighting them. like a fire dragon and you freeze over the fucking like magma geysers. Mm. That'd be sick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe not vulnerability. Right. Yeah. Maybe not vulnerability, but a weakness of some nature. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, I'm a convert. I, I'll call this a W take. Yeah. I think if we W's, yeah. W's are if agree, we if we yeah. slightly recontextualize it to the what I was to what we were just saying, then I will call it a W. Hmm. I mean, I kind of I, I think both either changing context or just in general. Like, I agree, I think it's cool. <laughs> okay, all right. Up next, probably probably we have spin these while we're talking there. But. Yeah, probably. Uh, 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 oh, okay. Well, so <clears throat> I'm going to post this before I start reading it because it's a bit it's a bit of a wall. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. So it says, so I'm a big time martial player. And to be uh -huh. honest, my hottest take is that martial players need to learn to bitch, uh, bitch about late games less. Like your role and their role has changed as you leveled. Uh, I hate this. I don't do a lot crap uh, in quotations. Use your brain, think like a team player, and set up for the wizard. Or pin a BBEG down with your MASS, in all caps. Enough of mass. this, I can't do much. Change your <laughs> mindset or change your class. <laughs> and if you are actually struggling, chat with your GM, and I'm sure they'd give, uh, give you something. But please, enough whinging. Battle masters are backliners, bestie. Uh, fucking barbarians are, uh, are nuts so bullshit and can't die if paired with any support. This actually Agreed. is kind of a hot take. No, I, agree. Uh, I, I agree would say this is a hot is. take in the like broader D and D community, but I do kind of mm -hmm. agree with it. Yeah, no, I agree. I do. And no, I, I, I yeah. no, go on. Matt. Oh, go for it, go for it. No, no, go for, go for it. Go well, yeah, no, I, I agree. Uh, th sorry. The one thing I don't agree with is that uh, battle masters are backliners. No, they are literally like, not, they can like, be, like, they can category. be backliners, but they could did back. They're so, no, no, like, no, 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 wait, 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 pause, pause, pause. You both misread mm -hmm. the statement. Backliners or sorry. Battle masters are a backliners bestie. Oh, are a backliners oh. bestie. Oh, yeah, As yeah, yeah, in they okay. support, they this protect the bet. They yeah, protect oh, the yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. They are okay, not no, saying no, no, battle no, no, masters no, no, are backliners. Oh yeah. So no, never mind then. No, I just wholeheartedly agree with this take. This is a spicy take. This is a W dubs only. I mean, this is a, these are called like, W's. Just, we take those. Because I know a lot of people do complain to like all oh, fighters, they don't get anything. But like, bro, you have like 30 different magical swords you can use that's in the DMG. You have all these other like utility things. And also spells. Yes, fighters, you get access to spells. And I'm not just talking about Eldritch Knight, Sedge. Like you can get them through magical items, like potions. Like you, you have access to everything. It's fine. You're good. Higher levels, yeah, you hit things harder, but like, yes, well, you change your mindset, be a team player. I agree. Y there is, there is. Yes, the wizard can meteor storm. It's fine, but yes. you can fucking stab to Rast like 30 times. It's fine. It, it, it is worth pointing out. There is a little bit of a like, there's a little caveat on the situation in that, yes, absolutely a good way if you're, as this person said, chat with your GM and see if they can give you something. A good way to help the fighter or the barbarian or whatever feel uh, more effective and like they're keeping up is to give them some of those more martial focused magic items for sure. For example, you give your fighter flame tongue early on in the game at like level five. He's going to be pretty happy for quite a while because flame tongue boosts his damage quite a bit. Uh, mm -hmm. But that is reliant on the uh you know reliant on the fact that your gm has to be giving you magic items or cooperating with you and it is also true to say that yes mechanically martial characters do get less world influencing stuff right as a wizard i can do a simulacrum i can do a wish i can use gate you know, I have like world altering shit. The thing is, the martial character 
can still do campaign altering things again though the GM has to let it let them do it the GM a lot of the problem with marshals is that the marshals can do cool shit if the GM is cooperative and the thing about magic you know spellcasters is that they don't necessarily need any GM permission to do their crazy shit because the spell of you know the game spells just give them carte blanche tell them they can do this stuff the GM has a lot harder time arguing with a spell that is hard coded into the rules as opposed to a fighter who's asking you nicely for a Vorpal sword, one of those things is easier to say no to than the other. You know, like, are you going to tell your wizard, no, you're just not allowed to cast Simulacrum? Like, you're just not allowed, even though you took it? Yeah, it's called counter spell. You know, like, well, (laughs) no, because Simulacrum, you wouldn't use in a fight. But, like, you, you, you can't really, you know, you can't... It's harder as a GM to just tell the spellcasters no in terms of stuff crazy stuff they can do it's easier to tell the marshals no because they're engaging with you on a more fictional and or player level they don't have the mechanics on their team as much so i understand what this person's saying and i do agree also the whining is annoying but again it is predicated on dm not being a pain in the ass and or a jackass but a lot of things are predicated on that so yeah, I, I, yeah. I think on a, on a separate kind of meta level, um, yeah, no shit. Like, yeah, 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 I, yeah. People don't like to hear this, but marshals are the beginner's player or the beginner's characters. They don't do as much on purpose because they are easier to pick up and learn or play on the fly, right? Like, we all we all discussed this. Barbarians are the simplest marshal in the game. Yes, that's kind of on purpose. <laughs> they are easy to play, difficult to master, and are satisfying no matter what play level you are at. Um, and you have, which in my opinion, I think rogues are the most complicated because they are, they have rules that like are predicated on a lot of things like sneak attack and how sneak attack can change among the marshals. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like, I, like in terms of pure marshals, it's barbarian fighter, ranger, rogue. And if, if, no, if I think I'm the sorry, mark is he way easier than the, the ranger? What? Oh, I, I honestly, I forgot about that. Yeah, so I will say... I was gonna say right. he, Isaiah didn't even say monk in that list. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Barbarian, fighter, monk, ranger, uh, rogue. Okay. And honestly, the only reason why fighter is first is because you have a resource to balance in monk. The fighter's like, yep, I do this twice. I'm done. Yeah, I'm tapped out. I did what I could. I blew my load. I'm yep. done. Yep. <laughs> fighter, fighter only lasts, you know, a minute in the bedroom, Max. I get to hit. It's a fantastic minute. Yeah, it's an excellent (laughs) minute. It's a very exciting minute, but you only get a minute. (laughs) Yeah. Um. Yeah, they're not supposed to do a lot, and all like, but on the in, like on the uh, on the other side of things, uh, marshals have access to more like in-game non-ability interactables than anybody else. Right, like a fighter can use more magic items than everybody else because they can use ones that let you do magic that don't require spell casting. If they do have spell casting, they have access to almost all of the magic items in the game. Uh, they have access to all of the weapons that aren't class coded, and there's not many of those. There is um, not. No. Like fighters can do kind of everything, and that's on purpose. They start off really simple, and they can get very complicated very quickly if you know what you're doing. Once again, easy to pick up. Difficult to master. Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I debate on the difficult to master one, but yeah, for the most part, yeah. I think to to be a good battle master, to like have an understanding of battle tactics and know how to use your, I think that takes some like practice. I just don't know that but the you, game. That's because I just don't know that the game has enough of a ceiling for it to feel like it even of a skill ceiling that's kind of a different uh, discussion but yeah that's fair enough I suppose anyway it gets W's yeah W takes actually you know what I'm gonna mm-hmm. put on my little document here I'm gonna put some check marks for actual spicy takes uh huh uh huh cause that one's getting it I like that one whoever you are you did good congratulations I mean spicy to a lot of other people not spicy to us uh, yeah. Uh, yeah yes correct not spicy to us but like Pretty solid. I'll give you that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Congrats. 
I, I haven't ten seen, out of ten. I need something that's gonna get one of us mad. What's going on here? These have all been very yeah. uh, appeasing. <laughs> I you, <laughs> I know one that's yeah. gonna get you. Mad. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but not for the reasons you think. Okay. Mm. All right. Oh, and I know who posted, I know who said it too. <laughs> because oh. I checked. <laughs> okay. All right. We're going to spit it. Oh, you're not just going to pick the angry one? That no, I don't think he can no. pick them once they're in the wheel. No, oh. I can't. I can actually, so you can weigh things, but I didn't want to do that. Um, mm. <laughs> I like this one. Um, is this spicy? I don't know. Uh, halflings are just short humans. Goblins are just short orcs. Kobolds are just short dragonborn. Gnomes are short elves. And dwarves are short. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> this isn't a take. This is just <laughs> like <laughs> weird fantasy prejudice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do hate the, this is this has got big Hannibal Burris energy where it's like how could you say something controversial yes so bold <laughs> like, <laughs> and true like this is just something that if you said it in real life people would just say you're racist <laughs> I, I really like the end part dwarves are just short dwarves are short, <laughs> short. Like, I don't I <laughs> Like I don't, I don't have any opinion. I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to say to this. I, I, I meh. Was meh? This is an, yeah, I was gonna say, is this an L or a W take? <laughs> I don't think it's either. <laughs> all right, so it's squarely in meh. I, 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 I think. think so. All right, whoever posted this, this is a meh take, but it's very, it's a W for me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's kind of funny. It's just like really random. Oh, also, that's why, why I want to give it a W because it got me to laugh for you. <laughs> uh, also, why are gnomes short elves? I don't. <laughs> I, I guess it's because they Feywild, like magical. Yeah, they're like fey. I, I, I guess. Yeah. I don't. I just want to know, like, to this person, uh, what what did who this, hurt you? Yeah, what tiny yeah. race hurt you? What did they do to you that made you so bad? <laughs> Why? Also, how dare you insult also, kobolds? How dare you insult <laughs> gnomes, sir? Kobolds, or ma'am, or them? How okay. dare you? Kobolds are better than dragonborn. I agree. I, you know what? Gnomes are better than elves. I'll say it. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. Lord of the Rings would have been so much more entertaining if Legolas was too was a gnome. <laughs> convince you can't convince me otherwise. I, I yeah, I could see that. I, I wanted him. I want him to like kick flip the shield. <laughs> and, um, what the fuck is the name of that battle? <laughs> oh no! The, the when he like surfs the shield down the stairs. Oh yeah, I don't know. I don't remember. Ah. Uh. Matt, you're you're the Lord of the Rings guy. Help me out. Battle of Helm's Deep. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just imagine him like two feet tall, but he's like kick flipping the shield and like no, no, no. Pulling the off three sixty no, no, no. scopes. The, no, the shield surf was in the Hobbit. That's not the Battle of Helm's Deep. No, no. wasn't it? That was yeah. Oh, Battle of Helm's Deep. Where's he surfing oh, down it? the staircase? Oh, okay. Never yeah. mind. Yeah. I'm gonna put this in its own categories. <laughs> it's not really a, an L W or map, but it's it's. It's in a league of its own, so I'm going to put it in its own space. <laughs> sure, a league of its own. Oh, uh, this is a good one. I, the I appreciate The hidden fourth you. column. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Look. that's so fucking funny. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, or not. I'll just accidentally delete it. Now it's gone forever. Oops. Sick. <laughs> Up next. Dragons are overrated. Dungeons are way cooler. Incorrect on principle. Dragons are fucking awesome. <laughs> That's the take? That's the whole thing, yeah. Oh, fuck off. L take. <laughs> what? Yeah, L take. Yeah. Absolutely L take. What are you only. talking about? Get the fuck out of here. No, I agree. Matt, or what even better, dragons that are inside dungeons. Uh, I'm saying. That's true. Yeah, that's, that's very true. true. That's very true. It makes the dungeon better. Mm. See, yeah, that's L take. What? That's so simple. There's such a short. I don't even. Yeah, this is like almost like a nothing fucking. <laughs> yeah, like, it's a bit of. Yeah, it is a bit of a nothing burger. I'll give you that. I just. You, you got to think about this, right? Right. Mm. There, there's no situation where a dungeon makes the dragon cooler. Correct. The dragon's already cool. Correct. But mm. if you have a dungeon and you put a dragon at the bottom of that bitch with some gold. Mm -mm -mm. 
That's has, a pretty dope has, dungeon. I'm not even going front. <laughs> has this person not played Skyrim? God. Why would they play Skyrim? Skyrim's bad. No, no, it's not. One of the greatest games ever made. No, it's not. It was, it's the, it was peak. You've been psyops. Psy Listen, sir, I don't, know, I don't know if you noticed this, <laughs> but uh, the game's been remade so many times. It must be good. Otherwise, they wouldn't remake it and people wouldn't be buying it. Eh? You know, Matt, people, you know, a lot of people really think the earth is flat, right? I, I just feel like there might be a correlation. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we all know it's a triangle. Can you imagine I, if someone I, actually I, said I really that? I really want the Twilight Zone <laughs> theme to play right now. <laughs> what? Why would the Twilight Zone theme? Because he said it's a triangle and we all got really quiet. Oh, oh. <laughs> I just zoned out for a second, so I didn't even hear him. Yes, my confusion <laughs> beam worked. I'm just doing like the TN like triangle. <laughs> All right, next take. Uh, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Smite is finding is a well balanced mechanic. <laughs> Incorrect. Wrong. L take. L. Absolute L take. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> Your no. opinion is bad and you should feel bad. I don't think Smite needs to be, you know, nerfed into the ground i don't think it's like a game destroying breaking thing necessarily but i don't think it's some sort of perfectly balanced mechanic i think smite is kind of like fireball where they made it a little too good on purpose the mm. problem is that smite comes up way more often and you could do way more shit with it than fireball and has no downsides whereas fireball has a very strong and obvious downside so I think this bite needs attention. I'm not going to say remove it from the game or nerf the no. shit out of the damage or stuff like that, but I think it needs to be looked at. And to say it's a well-balanced mechanic, I don't think you've played with the Paladin. And as someone, both me and Matt, who had to play with rogue Paladin combo, I'm sorry, but no. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm playing with two Paladins technically, and they're worse because they can use ranged smites. Jesus I mean, Christ. that's bad like too. My Gatling gun, I cast smite yeah, on every bullet. Much. Yes. <laughs> Correct. Someone uh, smited with an anti-tank rifle once. It did yeah, a ridiculous yeah, yeah. amount of damage. <laughs> oh, fuck. That's, that's an anti-tank rifle. Yeah, that <laughs> anti-tank rifle does 3d12 plus 9. Okay. Jesus. <laughs> someone They buffed it. Yeah. It didn't someone, always do that much. Someone fired that anti-tank rifle with the holy power of Jesus backing yeah. it. Yeah. All right, I, I also, I objectively, I'm sorry. This is an L take. L take. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> I have to agree. I props because that that I laughed really hard at that one. But yeah, oh, wait, yeah that's a, an L take. Is that a spicy take? Is it spicy? I, yeah, like, I think I yes. I think it's a spicy. Yeah, take. I think it's yeah. the, it, it is it is the most vanilla version of a spicy take. It is spicy in the same way that a jalapeno is spicy. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. That's a good way to put it. Yes. yes, Isaiah, you know that video right. of that one dude who coughs on the water and there's just the big picture of Jesus looking behind him? <laughs> you know what I'm talking no. about? Oh, oh my fuck. god. There's a dude, it's this video of this dude and he's like drinking a thing of water and he like chokes on it and it's just a big floating picture of Jesus just staring him down in the corner because he's laughing at some fucked up joke. I just imagine your player with the anti-tank rifle of that big picture of Jesus staring them down while they smite with it. Yeah, 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 that's fair. It's like, uh, if you ever watched the end of Carrie, when, uh, uh when after Carrie, movie. quote, unquote. Okay, all right. So, you know, she, you know the whole thing that she goes on the killing spree, right? I know that's the end, yeah. Yeah, okay. So at the end, she dies, quote, unquote. It's a whole thing. But okay. her, like, the only friend she ever had goes to her grave and like puts, I think it's flowers on her grave and a bloody hand reaches up. And then the character looks up at the statue of Jesus behind it. And it just has two very poorly photoshopped eyes staring <laughs> at her. <laughs> it's very uncanny and nice. very uncomfortable. Uh, that being said, our next take is <clears throat> Action Surge should be a 5th level or higher ability. This is an L take. I'm sorry. L's. L's. So this... I'm, uh, I'm mad on this one because I've heard a bunch of people who have said, like, I like... Act I really love Action Surge as an ability. But I would rather... Ah, fuck. I'm trying to remember. It, oh, it was... Um, ah, fuck. Damn it. It's the YouTuber, the dude with the eye patch. I'm blanking on his... Indestructible Boy. 
he came out and he was like, well, what if at level two, all fighters get the, um, the like superiority dice like thing. They get a little bit of battle master. So every fighter has battle master. Then you move up instead of getting a feat at six level, they get action surge, which granted six level. Some people are going to hate that because they're like, oh, well, most people, they play one shots at fifth level. Like six level seems really far. It's like midway through a campaign. But also at that point, I, you, if fucking you're going to fucking wreck the shit out of people because you you action surge at six level. You're attacking four times. If you're dual wielding, you use your bonus action. You fucking attack again. You're like fucking whirlwind of blades, dude. So I and I, I think the re this I think it has to for me personally, it's got to stay a third level mm -hmm. ability or, or second level. Ability, second. Sorry. Yeah, I just feel like. Lower levels are really the levels where characters get smashed. You know what I mean? Uh, like I, level, e even if we played Avernus and each of us was level three and had our subclass, I am not confident that we would have won that first fight in the bar. Granted, it's it is ridiculously overtuned, um, and sort of purposefully so because the point is to bribe the guards. But if you if you played it straight. I think if you, I think if you might win if you had a fighter because they can pull off those three attacks a turn because they can deal probably about 30 damage if they're really lucky and have a good setup like Wait, I think at level three they can't pull off X if you do the dual wielding thing that Matt was talking about oh if you have an off hit. yeah I, I just yeah. think that the action surge is too much of a great equalizer early on, and because fighters are so simple, and I think they should be that way, I, I think giving them superior dice might take away from some of that simplicity. Um, mm. I, yeah, I just think this action surge needs to remain that equalizer. Especially because level 1 uh, clerics can do 3d10 damage on a first level spell slot with Inflict Wounds. Right, and right. wizards automatically hit with a uh, magic missile. Granted, it's not a lot of damage, but guaranteed for uh, what is it? 44, I believe. Three. That's a lot. Uh, that's just me, though. Uh, I mean, I don't know if it should be level five, but I'm not against bumping it up to three or four. Potentially, I think three. I could see I could see it being level three. Uh, and really, the only reason I say that is just because the the two level fighter dip with the multiclassing, it's just annoying. Just hate that that's like a thing people could so easily do, you know. I can see them sw switching maybe subclasses to level two. I mean, actually, well, that added complexity to them. But like clerics and wizards get their and get their uh, subclass to level two, so you know, fucking why not the fighter? Oh, also, a level one magic missile is only a D4 plus one. No, level four magic missile is level is, one. I think it's level one magic missile. Yeah, is a D4 plus you're one. It, one dart. It's three bolts. It's three bolts. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. Oh, yeah. you create three. Oh, no, darts. Three. Yeah. yeah. OK, three. Never mind. So, yeah. yeah so yeah. it's three. OK, I wait. Yeah. Okay. It's, so it's, I was sorry, right. The first time. I said it was four. Mm. You were. Yeah. Yeah, it's 3d4. <laughs> Which again, and it's also force damage, which that matters. Uh, um, not really at low level. At that low level, well, uh, maybe, maybe. Well, not dude. Nothing's like resistant to force damage. No, I know nothing's resistant, but levels. nothing's resistant to damage much. Period. At that super low level. Yeah, lower level. Yeah, true, true. Um, I don't think it's a total L, but I, I don't know. Fifth level does feel like maybe too high. So I'm going to plant this firmly in meh. I, I guess it's a meh for me. Yeah. Hmm. Is 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 this also the jalapeno equivalent of a spicy take for this? Maybe. Because this is kind of spicy, I, but I don't know how spicy it is. I don't think it's that so this, spicy. I think it depends on who you talk to. If you're talking to Dungeon Masters, you're going to get a, a mixed response of Dungeon Masters being like, yeah, I can see it or no. Players? Hot take. Super yeah, hot players take. hot take. On probably, fire. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Hmm. That's a good point. I'll same mark thing it. With I'll mark this same as a hot thing take. With smite. Yeah. Same on thing with the smite. Dungeon on masters are like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, rolling it. 
We should have different tiers of like level of spice. Yeah, level of spice. Mm, that's a good. Mm, should have thought about should've that. Should have done, done a hot wings. All right, we got we got yeah. you know ghost pepper, habanero, fucking chili flakes. <laughs> The we'll do it episode sauce. five. We'll do it episode five. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, let's see. Prerequisites are fun, are an in, and are. Yeah. Prerequisites are fun and are an interesting balancing tool. Yes. Yeah. No, I agree. Yes. I. I, I really. This might. So this is a hot take. I know this. Mm. Is it? What I'm about to say. Oh, oh what you're about to say. Not this take. Okay. I, was about to say. I was like. <laughs> is it? Uh, <laughs> We all just agreed. This is a hot I take. understand. Yeah. I understand the urge for your D and D character to be the coolest, most awesome person ever. This is snowflake. Is this? Mm. Yeah, I get it. But like this, like let's just take off all the limitations, throw all caution to the wind. Shit, this shit's gotta go, bro. This is for the birds. Like, <laughs> I really like the idea that, uh, you know. Some races can do things that others can't, right? Like gnomes can't wield great swords efficiently because they're too small for a standard great sword. Do I like the idea of gnome with great sword? Yeah, but you can't do it. Rules is written. It is what it is. I, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. The way it is now that you're like, oh, I'm a gnome. I'm canonically one and a half feet tall, but I count as size medium. Nah, I'm out. Bro, get the shit out of here. Cut the shit out, please. What are you doing? You know, like... What does this have to do with prerequisite? That's some like limitations are fine. Oh, I mean, having a ceiling that you just can't hit is fine. It's a limitation. It breeds creativity. I think, uh, unfortunately, not everybody, obviously, but there is like a well, I don't want to work within the lines. It's like too fucking bad. That's why this is a game. The game's got mm -hmm. rules, you know? There are some rules that are dumb. Mounted combatant rules, those are dumb. You could be, you might be able to overlook those. Uh, but like, just basic prereqs, dude. Like, what are you doing? Like, oh, well, I, if I if I do my uh, ASI, then I won't be able to get a feat. Okay, well, do you want your feet or do you want a multi class? Like, work with me here. You know? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I've said this a million times. Uh, you make better art when you have constraints. And prerequisites are essentially just constraints into how you can make your character. So yes, I think they're I think they're fine. I think they are often a good idea. And I give whoever po whoever made this take, you get extra special b Josh bonus points. Clappy claps, right? Okay, clap, clappy. I don't know if this is gonna come in in the mic, but clappy claps uh, because you said it's good. It's a good, interesting game design tool. Yes, exactly. That's why it exists, because it's an interesting game design tool. That is one of its primary functions. That's one of the yeah. reasons that feats are kind of fucky-wucky where they currently are in 5e, because there's no prerequisites of levels or classes or feat trees or any of that crap. So some feats are just way more valuable than others, but you can take them at any level you want. And if you're doing level one with feats, you could take them at level one, even though it probably should be like a level four feet or something like that. So, yes, that is one of the best reasons for the prerequisite stuff is because it's an interesting game design tool. So yes, W take you, sir, madam, individual. Your take is a W. Let's get some round of applause. Uh, big W's, <laughs> big W's all around. Big W's, big okay. W's. Uh, yeah, no, not spicy. Actually, no, I once again, might be platonic spicy. ideal of spice. Yeah, it might be spicy. I don't know. <laughs> some some black peppercorns on some eggs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. maybe, yeah. maybe yeah. a little okay. bit. Of, a, I'll give it to you. There's a dab of hot sauce in my mayonnaise. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In my mayonnaise. Not did you say mayonnaise <laughs> on purpose, Matt? Did you choose yes. mayonnaise? Yes. Okay. Yes. Because <laughs> it's, it's just it's the yeah. most white thing you could think of. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just making sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. All right. Oh, on the opposite side of the Oh, baby, <laughs> are we going to finally get something to piss me off? Come on, let's go. Yes. Yes. yes they, uh, this is one of the ones. Mm. And, uh, the rules, in quotations, are meant as guidelines and should not be used to inhibit the joy and fun of the table. Creativity and levity should always be the trump card. All right. Y'all couldn't see my face right now, but as soon as Isaiah started talking, my face just dropped. 
I, 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 I just, actually think I know who wrote this. <laughs> I just so I'm 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 not uh, close to the first half. Like the no, second I'm not half I, is, I actually is I, a, I agree with the first half. It's the it's the the blanket statement of always. Like yeah. Here's the that's thing. That's the thing that's got me. Here's the yeah, here's say as a DM, I'm very loosey goosey when it comes to the creativity and levity, and I I let my players like get away with probably more than they should have. But you know. Okay. It's fine. I do it's too, fun. for the record. Yeah. But here's my problem with this whole the rules are meant as guidelines, is that mm-hmm. the rules is meant our guide the rules are guidelines. What that's supposed to mean is things like, oh, GM. I know this isn't normally how this works. Could I maybe use my athletic skill to try and sneak past the guards? And then you explain what you're thinking. And then the GM says, sure, that kind of makes sense. That's rules as guidelines. What rules as guidelines doesn't mean is, GM, I understand I'm playing a wizard. Can I have greatsword proficiency and use divine smite because I want to? And it'd be cool for my super awesome (laughs) character idea where I play Goku. No, fucker. No, you can't. <laughs> but Josh, that's not, what my character would do. That's not rules as guidelines. <laughs> okay? This is my problem. Rules as guidelines means occasionally you bend the rules a little bit. If somebody has an interesting idea or there's some little fun moment or, you know, you just need to work around or maybe you forgot a rule or maybe you just don't want to use the rule in that fashion in that moment, stuff like that. But the idea that creativity and levity should always be the trump card then then just don't play D D. <laughs> like this is my problem if you don't like having rules don't play D D. just do role playing there's lots of lots of other ways to do role playing if you don't want the rules don't use the rules the rules are there as a game and the whole point of the rules is the rules are supposed to guide and inform the story and the role playing and the fun that you're having they're like a guardrail that's supposed to drive you in specific directions to make a certain kind of story a certain kind of fun if you don't want that, then just do your horny erotic fan fiction role plays in forums like we all used to do back in 2005. Yes. Damn, that's crazy. All right. <laughs> like, I brought it back to 005, <laughs> baby. That's crazy. Like, <laughs> that's why this annoys me. That's why when people say this, I get annoyed. Then just don't play the game if you don't want rules. The point of the game is to play the game. If you don't want to play the game, then don't play the game. Like, I don't understand. Like, like, it, 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 that because okay, a great We're example. The, the last bit, creativity and levity can sometimes solve. Sometimes, problems. air quotes. <laughs> yes, sometimes <laughs> they just supersede the moment because it's just too perfect. But always, <laughs> come on now. No, and yeah, that's a little. That's a little extreme. To give you a great but example, right? People who play Final Fantasy fourteen. There's a massive mm-hmm. community of Final Fantasy 14 players who do role playing and that's all they do in 14 erotic and otherwise Th- looking at you Belmont players <laughs> <laughs> the people who are playing- was that a mean call out I don't think it was I, I, mean, I think it was pretty good it wasn't mean it was funny though <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. Um, Matt has no idea what we're, what we're talking about, but it was funny. Um, uh, ba- Balmung is where all of the the uh, ERP. It's where the horny goes on. Yeah, fourteen foot Fudakak characters yeah. are. Mm. Uh, that's where we. That's where we've isolated and quarantined <laughs> them. <laughs> but like the the e- the RP players, they don't interact with the rules of the game, which is to say, they don't do dungeons or raids or like events or any of that crap because they don't want to so they just don't interact with it so in D, if you just don't want to interact with the rules just don't play D. i'm sorry to whoever yeah, I, posted I, I, this I, if you know me personally i'm sorry i'm not trying to come after you i just i have opinions on this thing like i, I i'm pretty sure i do know who did post this um they okay, would absolutely you, disagree with your take i know um, they would uh, That's why they wrote it. <laughs> yeah. My, my, I think for me, right? The mm. crux of this take is that the. <clears throat> there's a similar thing to this, by the way. There's another mm. one literally right above it. Um, oh. oh, actually. I see it on the wheel right now. Should I just. I just want a, a, a slight clarification to what I mean when I say don't play DD. What I mean is 
if you would like to do a role playing thingy without d- caring about the rules in a D&D situation like if you want to use the setting and all the races and stuff from D&D fine that's fine I'm saying don't if you don't want to deal with the rules don't use the rules of D&D that's what I mean like you can still play within oh, the like I- D&D <clears throat> universe obviously well I I thought you just meant play a like more rules light game like oh no I, no I'm- I think people who are like oh, the well, people that too. who are really into the like rules or guidelines thing would probably have a better time playing Apocalypse World, unironically. Well, yeah, I mean, I, whatever. Yes, rules light, uh, rules lighter game, a fucking one page RPG or something like that. Absolutely is an option. Goblin with a fat ass. Goblins with a fat ass. Absolutely. Master Peak. Uh, honestly, the 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 Michelangelo of our time, really. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, truly, truly, truly. Uh, sorry, I meant to say the David of our time sculpted by Michelangelo. Um, but anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> But what I was saying is, like, just don't play a role playing game if you only care about like, don't play the game part. Just do the role playing if you don't want to deal with the rules. But yes, if you want to have a little bit of rules, but not the degree of rules that something like D&D does, then yes, you could play a rules lighter system. That is also an option. Yeah, I think for me, the the crux of this thing is. If you're like, if you're fighting, you know, uh, uh. Uh, Darkamon, the the fucking Lord, Death Lord Darkamon, Lord Dash, shoot, 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 Lord Darkamon, the Death Knight, and he hits you with a disintegrate, and like, you know, the the players like you, you roll it, and every the 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 let's say the barbarian succeeds, and he blocks it with his shield, and it's this great event, and after all the celebrating, the barbarian goes, oh shit, no, I rolled one point less, I failed that save. That's when you can be like, nah, that was really cool. We'll we'll just keep it as it is. That's okay, you know, like. That to me, that's where that that comes in. Yes. But it's not like uh, yeah, it's like a. Well, I want to play a one foot tall goblin with a great sword. It's like well, y- y- okay, you have disadvantage. It's like, but, but I don't want disadvantage. It's like yeah, well, you're playing a goblin with a, a, a fucking a gnome with a great sword. I'm like, I'm sorry, dude. You can play like a halfling, their size medium, or like a dwarf, uh, or you could play like a goblin with a long sword and just flavor it as a great sword. You can do that too. Um, Wait, I thought halflings were also small. It might be size small. I don't remember. I don't remember. Oh, to be honest, the rule, <laughs> the rule of like halflings can be size medium because I think halflings max out at like four and a half feet. Wait, yeah, what? You're, you're pretty size medium. Yeah, I didn't know they can get that big. Well, think about like I'm how thinking tall. like the hobbits. Like they're Hobbit, fucking... Well, the hobbits are probably like four feet tall. Are they? I thought that was I like three so. feet or some shit. So here's the thing, Matt. Dwarves yeah. can be like over five feet tall. And to me that, uh, yeah, blasphemous. I'm aware. I, But they can be. So. <laughs> hmm. Tolkien describes Weird. hobbits as between two and four feet, with the average there height being three feet six inches. Okay. Child size. They're they're yeah. ten year old sized. Yeah. All the better to punt them across the battlefield. I. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay. Use them as weapons. Oh no! So yeah. Uh, sorry. Halflings average about three feet tall in five e specifically. Mm-hmm. Um. Dwarves. Let me, hold on, let me check. So I know it says dwarves can be like five feet tall, and I was like, Jesus. I just want yeah, between like, four and five feet. Jeez, a big. You're just a really tall dwarf, Matt. It's perfect. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah exactly. True. Short, um, among, short among the humans, tall amongst the dwarves. Yeah. Mm. The dwarves. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, I, this is a spicy take for sure. Um. I don't actually think I'll take I, I'm gonna be honest I think in the greater in the wider D&D community might not be that spicy of a take I'm gonna be mm. alright what do you think Matt I'm gonna spice, give it no a spice. meh meh again, take I, I, I'm hmm? so you're saying it's a meh take meh take yeah because yeah. I agree okay. with s- the, the first half the second half is definitely a debatable D- debatable okay it's, right, I mean, uh, it's I, it's an L take for me. I actually, you know, yeah, because I do like the first half, I will also put this in the, the meh takes. Uh, as for spice, I think it is, but... I don't know. Josh says no. It's, Matt, hard, to, it's hard to say. Uh, I don't honestly think it's that spicy. Like, the ending bit, again, it, I disagree with it, but I don't think... No, no I don't think it's that... I see. Okay. 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 We're rolling it. Okay. Let's see what we get. So. Okay. Let's see. 
Alright. Uh, <clears throat> Actually, this is something I agree with. Uh, 5e characters should all get a bonus skill slash item slash language proficiency at levels uh, 6 and 15. At level 11, they should all receive a choice of a skill proficiency or an expertise style effect. Yes, I agree. I think they're doing something like this now with five, you know, well, not with the items, but like the skills and the expertise. I think they're doing that. Like one of my biggest gripes was why the fuck does the rogue have expertise in Arcana, yet I'm the wizard and I literally pull magic out of a book and I don't have expertise in Arcana. Are you fucking shitting me? I, I believe when they say with an item, they might mean with like an instrument or like a, a tool, or tool kit or something. OK, yeah, yeah. I can see that, too. Yeah, I don't, uh, yeah. no, I, I agree. This fine. is a dub. Not spicy, but it's a dub. I don't is, know. I'm sure, is, is six and fifteen when proficiencies change? Because I always e thought that was like not level nine and for character. Let me just check real quick. Yeah. At level six, no. At fifteen, no. Uh, so at level oh, thirteen, fuck. it goes up to five, and at level five, it goes up to three. So. The fuck? Yeah. Why did they pick? Why yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure on the then. level choices there, but also honestly, the level choices not that relevant to this. I think I don't know. I, it's not like the most egregious thing in the world, but I do feel like do we really need the skill bloat? You know, I feel like you're gonna get a little skill bloaty if you give everyone two additional skills. Picking an expertise at level 11, again, I don't, the level choice feels kind of random, but picking an expertise mm -hmm. at level 11, yeah, I I don't, I, you know, I don't necessarily hate that, although you could maybe make an argument that if you give everyone expertise, you take away some of what makes a rogue and a bard kind of fun, because expertise... Well, you only get expertise in one thing, though. It's one. Yeah. Whereas bards and rogues get two they get or four, They get more than one. On. But, you know, I don't know. I don't know if everyone needs expertise. That feels, I don't know. Like, maybe, maybe. I don't know. I'm solidly, uh, the fence is way up my ass on this one. <laughs> so I guess it's meh. It's like a meh take for me. Like, maybe. It's a maybe. I could maybe see it. This feels like another right. one of those things that would work better if there was a little bit more granularity to it. Like if proficiency wasn't just an on off switch, if there was a little more granularity to it, this idea might work a little better. You know, like imagine, yeah, I see what you're saying. imagine if you will, instead of expertise mm. at level 11, you pick a skill and you have, you know, effectively permanent guidance on that skill. So every time you roll it, you roll an additional D4, you know, then it has a little bit more granularity to it. It doesn't smack. At, it doesn't feel as strong, but it's still a boost. And then rogues and bards expertise still feels cool. You know, it could be something like that. I don't know. I, I still feel like you run into that issue that like what Matt was saying, right? Where it's like when it comes to Arcana checks, a high level rogue with art with uh, proficiency with expertise in Arcana is most likely going to roll better than the wizard whose whole class is based on Arcana. Yes, that one particular example I think is goofy, but like yeah, I mean, wizard probably should have Arcana expertise. That's just one example though. Like, I don't know if that necessarily going to slap that across the board, you know? Like, does that mean everyone needs it? Yes, it's silly that the wizard doesn't have that, but, you know. I just, I don't know. I, I just, I'm just hesitant to hand expertise out to everybody. You know, because it feels, because the thing about expertise right now is that it's kind of rare. So it feels cool. Whereas if it's not rare, not going to feel as cool anymore. Well, it's not, it's not that rare anymore because there's a feat that gives you expertise. Yeah. Uh, True. There is the feat, which does take it down a notch, but you still have to select and, and make a choice to get said feat. Whereas bards and rogues just get it. You know, they could get a feat and have their expertise still like. Uh, yeah. I don't know. There might be a universe where I could be convinced on that one, but not right now. OK, so you say Matt, Matt. Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess Matt. I don't know. I'm, I'm conflicted. Yeah, I, I 
definitely doesn't feel like a full W take. No. Also, I mean, I, yeah, I don't know. I would be, I, I feel like skill bloat, like just everyone having, like everyone just having a bunch of overlapping skills could be you. Hmm. Is it a hot take? Is it a hot take? Mm, no. No, it's not a no. hot take because anything that's trying to give player player characters more power is never a hot take. Like ever. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll roll the next one. It's like level oh, one geez. players should all get Vorpal Swords. It's like, yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> I mean, they should, Matt. Why wouldn't they? Mm, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, mm-hmm. So we have this. <clears throat> Combat is overrated unless it serves a purpose for, uh, for more plot and further character growth and roleplay. Um, well, no. I mean, this is some, an alchemy, bud. I, uh, so, sometimes you just you just want to hit stuff. I can't. Yes, yeah, sometimes combat, I just want to kill things. Yeah, like I I agree with most combat should like serve some sort of purpose in moving the plot forward. Like, but again, random encounters are okay. Sometimes orcs attack. Sometimes you know, fucking goblin comes out of the wood, works, pantsies you, and runs away. And you're like, fuck. <laughs> Like, shit just happens, and it's fun. That's such a <laughs> did, did you do this to your players? No, but I should have. <laughs> no, but he yeah. might now. Um, I might now, yeah. I mean, li- so the first half, so I was, I was, when you, when I saw combat is overrated, I was actually ready to get more mad at this. But when they said, <laughs> unless it serves a purpose for more plot and further character growth and roleplay, I don't know, character growth and roleplay is... I, you can't have every single kind of nebulous. <laughs> well, it's nebulous, but also you can't have every single combat be like a character growth thing. You know what I mean? Like, that's just like, yeah. you just can't unless you're going to have very, very rare combat. I Okay. I feel like I need to break this down into parts. Your <laughs> the statement combat is overrated. If you feel that way in regards to. I, these are all about D and don't know that we told people to do D and D specifically, but we're all getting D and D ones. So whatever. Uh, I, I didn't, I, I, I did say if you reference a separate system, we probably might not have anything to say on it. So I, I believe it's assume it's five E unless stated otherwise. Okay. There are some that well, talk about like Paizo. Maybe you shouldn't have said that you unintentionally made these all D and D. I think feel like, uh, but anyway, um, yeah, like, if you think combat is overrated, then don't play d and I'm going to be honest. Or Pathfinder or Shadowrun or Lancer or like there's a lot of games. If you think combat is overrated that like just don't just, just don't do not play because they're about that a lot, you know, especially D&D Pathfinder and, and Pathfinder. They are very much about that. Um, the idea of. I think what the person is saying is like every fight should serve like a purpose. I don't totally disagree. You're kind of you're kind of onto something there. I would just say maybe keep your definition of purpose a little bit broad because I do think random encounters can serve a purpose. A very basic example is you're in town and you have a mission to go to like you know, another, you know, another town or to some ruins or something. And to get to said ruins, you have to cross cross through the thick woods. And someone tells you the woods are really dangerous. We had this problem X, Y, and Z months ago, and this and that happened. So these woods are really dangerous and monsters are all over the place. So like, if you're going through the woods, be prepared. And then you get attacked a whole bunch while you're there. The purpose that that combat is serving is to reinforce the narrative. These woods are dangerous. So it is serving a purpose. It's not like a grander overall story purpose, but it's sort of a like verisimilitude and like a a sort of a vibes purpose, if you will. So, you know. Kind of a W. You think so? Kind of depending on what the, the problem is that this is a very short sentence and I would need to pair it apart more. So like. If the person saying like combat sucks and it just happens too often, I will say L take. But if the person saying that I hate when combat feels like totally meaningless and doesn't do anything, I kind of kind of a W in that case. You know what I'm saying? 
Uh, for me, it would bring it from an L take to a meh take. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I've certain I've certainly felt like combat fatigue. Oh yeah, I've definitely been there. But number go bigger. Yeah. Like yeah. number go bigger. Cause number go bigger. You know, I like I like <laughs> number go bigger. Let me let me. Yeah. I am that guy. I am the Bionicle meme where it's like Barbarian has a plan, the Barbarian's plan, and it's just the Bionicle Smash. doing like whack. Yeah, yeah whack. that's me. Whack. I like that. I mean, I very yeah. often build DPS characters because I like Number Go Bigger. Uh, not always, but usually. Um, yeah. Do I think it should I, on I, I, average I, so serve I, a purpose? Yes. Like, if, if you get attacked by goblins or, or fucking like kobolds or whatever in the middle of the night every night, then you're like, Jesus Christ, can we make this stop? But like, I don't know, random encounters every now and again are fun. Yeah. But also like it lets the GM sort of flex some muscles, I think. True. Like there are so many monsters in the monster manual and there are so many cool monsters with really neat things that you're like, well, I, I can't figure out how to put this thing in the plot logistically. Right, like Andrew Sphinxes are fucking dope. I don't know where I would put them, but if you make it as like you stumble into an Andrew Sphinx's lair while traveling the deserts on your way to Chult, as a that could be kind of cool. It'd be a, it, to be fair, it'd be a really really difficult combat for anybody who's not high level. But the point still remains, you know. Yeah, it, yeah. I mean, I get what you're saying. In the idea of like sometimes I just want to whack with Bionicle Axe. I don't know. I, I guess I guess I'm on the meh take on this one. I I guess. I'm I'll, I'll yeah. bring it up to meh. I'll bring it to yeah. meh. I think I need a little more context to really, really say. So you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That I being said, I, I do stand by the statement though, if you think combat is generally overrated and uninteresting, don't play D D. Stand by that one. Yeah, no, I mean like I'm still somebody who firmly believes if you want to have a really roleplay heavy combat minimal game, you can do it in 5e. You can, but it's going to require a lot of extra work. It will. I, I, and like, I, like, I'm not someone yeah, who's Matt, like, as if Matt you want to have this thing, you shouldn't play 5e. It's like, chill out there, psychopath. Mm. You will have a better time with a system more tailored to what you want. You will. Yes. Absolutely. But... If you want to do it your way, do it your way. You know, honestly, (laughs) real shit. This is a little bit of a tangent, but I don't know. Like, I I think that's really my frustration. Anytime, anytime people are like, but I don't want to play another game. I want to play 5e. And and I'm just sitting here and I'm like, I I understand what you're saying. You've played 5e already. You know what it is. You want to play it because it's easier and, you know, whatever and you're used to it and it's comfortable but it's like play-doh yes but the thing that frustrates me is that when i'm suggesting to people oh you should play this game instead it's usually because in my head i'm like you should play this game instead because you're gonna have a better time it's gonna be more fun if you play this game instead of 5e oh i want to play a game where um, all the characters are monsters and like we're in high school and like we kind of want to make out with each other all the time. Oh, you should play Monster Hearts, but I'm doing it in 5e. Yeah, but you're going to have a better time if you do it with Monster Hearts. You're going to have more fun because that's what the game was made for from the ground up. You're going to have more fun with it. Like, mm. that's the thing that gets me so tilted when any time people are like, but I don't want it. It's work. I'm like, yeah, but it's work. That's worth it. I understand it's more work, but the I, I know this is some stereotypical fucking Uncle Iroh Grandpa Wisdom type shit, but like the things that are worth it in life require work. The things that are more fun require work, you know? <laughs> like, like, unless no, I mean, the person just, specifically is asking, how do I do this thing in 5e? I, I don't know. I don't know like, what this person is saying specifically, you know? Yeah, no, no, no. I'm just saying, like, unless they specifically say, I want to do this thing in this system. Because, like, I, I've talked to Isaiah about this where, like, I get mad. When people are like, how do I run a heist in 5e? And people are like, just play another system. And it's like, no, numb nuts. I asked, how do I run a heist in this? this yeah, this, but yeah, here's English, the thing. This specific system, which is doable. And it's like, if people are like, if people would just say and said, hey, you should look up this gather game, you might be able to take some inspiration. Or if it was vice versa, it's like, hey, I want to add some heroic fantasy to my fucking heist game. What do I do? And it's like, hey, have you looked at 5e? 
But like, like, here's the thing, Matt. Even in the case where somebody specifically says, how do I run a heist in 5e? And I say to them, maybe you should just play Billions in the Dark instead. The, the, the thing is, is like, the person saying, how do I run a heist in 5e? They might not know what they're missing. Like, they might be saying, how do I do it in 5e? Because 5e is the game, only game I know about. And it's the game that I learned how to play. And so now I'm just sort of, no, I don't feel like trying to do any other hunting or I think it makes more sense to try and do it in five, like whatever the reason is, but they might actually not know what they're missing out on. You know what I mean? Like you be might, you could be potentially opening someone up to a whole new universe of fucking shit. They would have never known about. They could find their new favorite game potentially. So it's like, eh, so I, I can see that I, there's, you know, I, I agree with what you're <laughs> okay. saying, Josh, but I, I think. I think you get the same result by by with what Matt was saying, right? Is rather than saying just play this game, say, oh, check this system out. They do this mechanic really well. Well, yes, you might be able to incorporate that into your game, <clears throat> and then they could read that book and go, oh, what what other cool shit this book has? Yes, and they go, well, this game is just fucking sick. Hold on, I want to play this. There's more delicate ways to do it for sure. Yes, I think the approach of how you suggest someone play a different game that helps a lot, especially. The problem, too, is the real reason that this becomes a frustrating nightmare a lot of the time is because people coming from 5e, 5e is the king of the castle, and it's really hard to tell to, to say to someone, well, you know, you don't have to listen to the king all the time. Like, I know he's the king, but you could you could listen to, like, one of the courtiers every once in a while instead. I'm just saying this other guy, he's pretty cool. And then you're like, ah, but I don't want to dishonor the king, though. you know, like people coming from 5e are in this weird position where that was a strange analogy i don't know why i went down that rabbit hole but people are coming from this weird position where they feel like it's harder to pull someone away from 5e into other games because of this stranglehold 5e has on the hobby but as soon as somebody literally it's let me phrase it this way it's really it's difficult to get someone to play their first tabletop game and then if that first tabletop game is D&D, it's incredibly difficult to get them play it to get them to play a different tabletop game. But once they've played that second game, all bets are off. The doors of Gaia have opened up. Heaven is heaven is before them. The fucking the apple, the uh, the Garden of Eden is visible. Like once you can get someone to play a different game once automatically people become more willing to play other games after it like instantaneously i've seen it happen a bunch of times like you just you just opens all this all this op, all these opportunities up so it's just you know that's really what it's <laughs> i guess what i'm saying is like i'm sitting here on the other side like no listen to me i promise i'm doing this for your own good <laughs> you know fair enough i don't know i know that was a that was a complete rabbit hole but yeah like I, I, I'm not trying when I tell someone you should play this game instead I'm not trying to be a dick about it I'm trying to say something I'm trying to say it because I genuinely think you will have a better time if you play this game instead and again the way you phrase it does matter for sure like how you approach it is relevant but yeah okay that's not really related to the to the taking question though uh, we are gonna roll it though. Uh, yeah, yeah, next one. Don't hate me, internet. I'm trying to be nice. I swear, I'm not coming from a place of malice. Most of the time. Oh, okay. I mean, we got a dub take right here. Oh, um, do we? Okay. Fourth edition actually had a better system for saving throws than Five E. Correct, sir. <laughs> yeah. I don't actually know what the saving throw. For so for four E, you had um. You had three. What was it? Reflex, three, fortitude, yeah. and willpower. Yeah, essentially the way fourth edition and older editions and potentially I think Pathfinder might still do this. Pathfinder does do this. Yeah, um, you took your six stats and crunched two of them down into a singular save. So fortitude is a combination of like strength and con reflex okay. is a combination of uh, dex and dex and wi right. charisma. I wizard. think it's charisma might be charisma. And then willpower. No, no, it's not. It's I think it's Dex and Wisdom. And then willpower is a combination of of charisma and intelligence. I think um, because it's okay. like mental willpower. Um, 
point being, you crunch down the idea is there's sort of you crunch down two of them into three, and then you have less potential saving throws that you're dealing with because you only have three to worry about. Mm -hmm. Um, And then you don't run into that awkward problem that 5e has where there's a lot of charisma saves and like not a lot of intelligence saves. You don't have that problem because it's all just under willpower saves. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, because you know when you have that thing where you're like, oh, like, like Matt, when you're trying to run the game, right? And you come up with some sort of oh, if the players walk into this area it's gonna like it's going to mess with their mind unless they make a saving throw. Right. And then you're like, okay, the thing is messing with their mind. What saving throw should it be? Should it be charisma because they're resisting it with their force of will? Or is it intelligence? Cause it's their brain. I don't mm-hmm. know. In four, yeah. you'd be like, it's a willpower save because it combines them, you know? And then a fortitude you also save this thing. is just standing your ground, and then a reflex save is reflex is what it sounds like, basically. Yeah. yeah. You also had this thing where players were had one good one, one okay one, and one nothing one. One nothing, yeah. Whereas, mm. you know, if you have if you're like a, a fucking um if you're a barbarian and you have strength saves as one, it's like congrats. Or, or if you're a wizard, congrats on those in saves, bud. You're gonna use them basically never. once. <laughs> yeah, you're going to yeah. use them mm-hmm. against the mind flares, and that might be it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just it just helps balancing out that saving throw disparity. It helps crunch down the numbers a little bit so you have less numbers to worry about. It makes a little more fictional sense. In my opinion, I think it makes more fictional sense. I agree. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, did, uh, it is is W. I, I got I got I got dub take. no notes. Yep. I think it is a spice. I think this is considered a spicy take, though. Uh, anything regarding four E is a spicy take. So yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> I think I have seen people generally like not think that the five E save system is fine. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't personally mind it, but this just sounds easier to use. I f- I feel like it is. I mean, I I might be misremembering it a little bit, but for the most part, yeah, I feel like it is. Mm. Granted, I do think. Was it fourth edition? I don't know if it was fourth or third, but there was some stuff where you would sometimes have to save versus like there was a saving throw based on stabs, wands and rods, which is like any spell cast by like a magical item had like its own kind of saving throw thing. That's a little goofy. I don't know if that was in fourth edition or third edition, though, but I do remember that being a thing. And that can we okay no I've have, I have, this is a minor complaint I have uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm. I hate uh-huh. rods why as a magic item they're just they because they're described as a like a lot of times it's just a pole yeah. it's just yeah, like it's a, a nicely baton. detailed pole it's a baton yeah yeah but like but well, yeah okay. but when they're detailed they're cool but like call them like a scepter or like don't call it a rod like a it sounds like you're talking about a dick. But also, like, it's like this smooth silver rod with buttons on it. I'm like, so, okay, so I'm holding a flute. <laughs> you know? I'm holding a silver phallus. Yeah, yeah I, think I just, that I don't know. There are some magic items that call themselves scepters, but I don't, not a lot. You're right. Just change the name to scepter, I feel like. Like, I think, like, I, I'm, I don't, it might just be me, but when someone's like a, a, a rod of something, I'm like, like, how big we, like, a rod assumes that it's bigger than a wand, but it's smaller than a staff. But what it, is it like? I I just like really overcomplicate it in my head, and I'm just like just, just call it like a scepter or something. Like Honestly, anyone can look up what a scepter I is. I kind of imagine them like the size of your arm, like lengthwise from I like elbow like, to yeah, I, yeah, like the size of a of a marching baton. Yeah, yeah see, but uh, correct. That's what I would smaller. think too. No, but like the fact that I have to think about it and be like, what? Also, mm-hmm. like. First, it, uh, all of the I think they should also make it a like call it scepter because that assumes that there's like a large head on it or of some kind that doesn't help the dick allegations, to be honest. Doesn't but mm. uh, I don't know. You, that way you can use it like a mace in the same way that you can use all staves as quarter staffs. Uh, honestly, I, I for me, I would just say it should be wands or wands or staves. Like, I don't even want rods to be in there. They feel like an unnecessary third. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, where where do rods come from? Like, what what fiction are they pulling from I with think, a rod? I think it's the idea of like the the king or the priest's scepter, like as a mm. as a item of religious significance, as like a uh, like a symbol of religious power. I think interesting. So I, I, think. I guess it's the it's it's the right because you have a holy symbol. So I guess the idea was holy symbols and rods, which. Uh, yeah, pretty stick joke. Yeah, something, something. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and then for wizards, you had staves and wands, I guess. I, I think, I, I, I think that's where we're getting like pulling from. I'm not a hundred percent on that though. So that being said, I, I'm gonna be real. Wands are for nerds. Wands are kind of nerds. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of wizard with staff personally. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. staff or crystal. I like, I like pondering my, pondering, <laughs> pondering my demon right core. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> My favorite version of that meme is pondering the demon, the demon core. core. <laughs> I love it. Yep. Here you go, Matt. This one's for you. Sick. Uh, it's only cannibalism if you're eating your own kind. Under any other circumstances, it's just a in quotations sparkling moral dilemma. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Why is that for okay. Matt? Yep. Because this, this is, is one from of his my players. player. <laughs> this uh, is from my player. The shadow. Oh, that's monk. right. The Yuan Tea Jerky. Yes, sir. <laughs> Um, I, I, I'm not gonna. Uh, so, I, I'm, so I, I, I will. This is a league of its own, bro. <laughs> he kind I, of will, is. I will phrase this with. So his backstory for because he was playing a jackal person uh-huh. was that he was raised by a monastery of shadow monk trained orcs, and so his mentality was like, well, orcs, like he's like they, eat, you know, they eat whatever. So he's like, well, so then I can eat whatever. Also, I'm a dog. I'm jackal man. I can eat anything. So it's I, fair game. I I don't I don't I don't think orcs would be cannibalistic. What? I see. I don't know. Depends on the orcs. I don't know that. I, yes. Other ones. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that I follow that logic. I don't I don't know that Faerunian orcs are generally cannibalistic. I don't. Um. I I don't know. You know, I'm. I refuse to give a W or an L on this. And I, 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 I am, just. I'm, yeah, I'm I abs- putting it in the league of its own I, category. I abstain. I'm, I'm put. I'm gonna put it in the most out of. No, no, really, this is the most out of pocket take we have. That's that's the category you get. You win the award for the most out of pocket. I just wanna. I just wanna. I just wanna reiterate real quick line. for anybody listening. It's only quote unquote cannibalism if you're eating your own kind any other uh, under any other circumstances comma it's just a quote unquote sparkling moral dilemma right so this is like that thing where like you're <laughs> in Icewind Dale you're stuck on the mountain you know you have a goliath a kobold a tiefling and a tabaxi and let's just say the tabaxi freezes over is it cannibalism if the other uh, three party uh, members eat that tabaxi? Because they're technically humanoid, but they're a different species right, listen, of humanoid. Listen, listen, <laughs> listen. I will I will say you are technically by definition correct, but I I I will not I am not giving you this acknowledge like I will not acknowledge this. He's out of line, but he's, he's got out a of point. line. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, he's out of line, but he's got a point. He's technically <laughs> correct, but I will not acknowledge this. Uh the, the council will recognize you, but you do not get the rank of master. Yeah. Uh, uh, like Maury, sir, you are out of pocket. <laughs> yeah, like I. Yes, by definition, right. you're correct, but that's the only situation where you're correct. Yeah. I think mm. the sparkling moral dilemma is quite strong. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's a very carbonated moral dilemma, sir. <laughs> yeah. All right. We got a, oh our next God. take is. um. <clears throat> While it's important to have a basic understanding of the rules and your character's functionality, I don't think it's necessary for a player to completely read the entire handbook. I think commitment to the character and to group storytelling is vastly more important. Um. Yeah, I mean, no notes. No notes. No, no I agree. Notes. No, it's honestly, yes, correct. You should not read the entire player's handbook. Fair enough. Yeah. I have like, well, you should know what your fucking character does. Yeah, like, you know what your character You should does. know what your character does. Like, Listen, yeah. I've said on multiple occasions, one of uh, the, uh, I've said this to many people many times in an attempt to get them to learn new games. <laughs> Matt, um, most of the time, no, that's wild. We, <laughs> Crazy. Am I wrong? <laughs> Can't we? You done this? Insane even. <laughs> most of the time, 
you don't need to read the entire rule, rule book of a tabletop game for a multitude of reasons. There's many pages you can skip over, right? The classic example I give, if you're playing D&D and you're like, well, I want to play a dwarf fighter. Okay, cool. You don't need to you don't need to read any of the races but dwarf. <laughs> the and the entire back of that book completely irrelevant yeah. to you. <laughs> and you don't need to read any of the classes but fighter, right? You're, you've made that decision. So, okay, read dwarf and read fighter. You're fine. But even before that, if you're a player, you know, you only need to read in terms of the player's handbook. You want to read basically it for character creation purposes up to chapter six. And then the playing the game segment is only 20 ish pages, which is not that hard. And you don't really need to read all of the rules of the magic stuff, especially if you're not playing a caster. And you don't need to read the entire equipment table, obviously. So, like, yeah, no, you don't need to read everything. Most of the time, you don't need to read everything. And then in a lot of other games, the book is cut in half between GM section and player section. If you're not running the game, you don't got to read the GM section. So like, yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, like you often have to read a lot less than you think you do. Like, don't look at the page count number and go, oh, no, like because that page count number is often not indicative of how much you actually need to absorb in any one given time before the campaign starts. Also, as you're playing in a campaign, you are going to, you know, um, what's the word? Like, you're going to, like, look back at the rule book as you're playing the game and you're going to double check rules and you're going to learn rules as you play. Like, you know, tabletop, uh, tabletop books are, are not, they're not, novels they're reference books right they're encyclopedias so you're supposed to treat them as such where you kind of look through them and then whenever you need to look for something specific you go back and you look at it you know like that's why the organization of a tabletop uh rule book is very important so you can jump back to specific sections when you need to so yeah i mean no notes I, yeah <laughs> no notes mm. uh, i know i mean w's <laughs> this is a madam congratulations madam yeah. your take is a W. Strong W. Strong W. And also, I don't think a hot take either. I mean, maybe some people think it's no. a hot take, but like, no. No, I don't think it's a hot take, but it's a good one. And yes, uh, yes. Honestly, if you're a player who's like not as great at learning the rules, but you're like emotionally committed to the game, I will take that. Honestly, I think most people will genuinely yeah. like someone yeah. who shows up to session every week is excited. They're interactive. They're coming up with ideas. I want that player way more than the person who knows how to power game their min-maxing much in straight up. Granted, I will say, if I have to explain to you how Magic Missile works for the 10th time in a row, I am going to get a little exhausted at a certain point. Yeah, correct. <laughs> I, yeah. Happy mediums. Happy mediums. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, next. Please give me the one I want. Please give me the one I want. He's so close. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, he's fishing. He's fishing. Uh, so I, I don't know what the fuck, Matt. I think this one's for you. No. Okay. Oh. I because I don't know what this means. Yeah, that's so. That's the name of the uh, the shadow monk. God fucking. All right, sir. Yeah. You are out of pocket. <laughs> I. <laughs> I'm not even going to justify I, this I, with W's or not. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, just for those listening, it just says, hey, you did nothing wrong. Um, if you're confused about that statement, uh, Matt's, I don't even, Matt, explain it. I don't even totally remember. Uh, yeah, my buddy Chris's Shadow One character was the jackal man named Hey You. Uh, yeah, and apparently you know, he did nothing wrong because uh, cannibalism. Explain what he did that is, that is supposedly nothing wrong, though, Matt. Oh, uh. I don't know. Actually, it's, wait, hold on. No, no, he did it, do something isn't wrong. He, hold on. Wait, wait. Because isn't this referring to the wa Yuan Tea Jerky? Isn't that this is what? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This yeah. character fed people other people. That's right. That's fucking yeah. wrong. There's that's right. no universe that's where that's right. not morally fucked. You psychopath. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Jesus. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yes. No, you took people and you didn't like. If you're if you're like you want some Yuan Tea Jerky, you completely did didn't it without tell them. there. Yeah. Not you. Royal you, your character yeah. did this without their consent. Yeah. You are in the wrong. Yeah. You are out of pocket. 
I think my favorite was one time he gave a piece to an actual Yuan-Ti. Oh my god. <laughs> that's... See... Oh my... Now that is actually... What the fuck, that's, dude? De that's definition cannibalism. Uh, also, this is not a hot take. Wrong. This isn't even a take, sir. This is a joke about your own game. <laughs> fuck out of here. <laughs> oh Insane. Alright, next take. <laughs> so <laughs> goofy. Monks aren't weak. People just have trouble understanding that monks are 17 passives and reaction abilities in a trench coat. They're incredibly versatile. They make for incredible flex roll fillers, uh, flex roll fillers at any party. Also, Kensei should be allowed to take big weapons like halberds and great axes for monk weapons. Give me my Kung Fu movie weapons, masters, damn it. No yeah. notes. This is correct. This is a W take. This is correct. It's not even really a hot uh, take. Um, I don't, I don't know if it's a, total w because i don't th to say monks aren't weak i think is a little not sh like they are kind of weak just by the nature of they struggle in a lot of regards and it doesn't feel like they they totally fill a niche properly like i have a hard time identifying monk what monks 100 percent like intended role in the game is so though, the, so they're I, the person said it here, right? They're sort of the martial equivalent of a jack of all trades. They yeah, deal yeah, damage but, like a they deal. They have attack numbers equivalent to fighters. They can tank because they have ridiculously high ACs. If you they don't, uh, you build them out correctly. Ridiculously high AC though. An armored defense. I mean, they yeah. can ma in in natural stats. They can max out at twenty. That's not ridiculously level, high. And also is hard at level like four or sorry level uh. Six? That's that's pretty hot. That's pretty hard and unlikely. They don't tend to have ridiculously high AC. They actually tend to have pretty fucking average pity AC. Mm, no, most people most people nowadays because you know most people play monks decks you know with the high decks. Yeah, you easily get your your AC to twenty. A lot. I don't. Or at least I don't 19. think I'm easily. Like, well, I think most of them end up in the 17, 16 area. That's still pretty solid. It's for not a low terrible, level but it's not like God tier amazing or anything. The fighter. I mean, so for the equivalent, rogues get like a 15 to 17. Uh, yeah, but rogues aren't. And that really depends be, on what armor they take. Huh? Rogues aren't supposed to be like the target so much. Uh, no, but for a, a character that as that has the same health equivalence as a rogue, which is D8, their AC is much higher in comparison. I mean, it's higher. I don't know if I'd say much higher necessarily. It depends, but I just, I still just, I don't, I, I just don't think they're, I, they're just not super, like, they are kind of weak. I think that's just a statement. That's true. Like, I think they're just factually kind of weak in comparison. I think the things that they're good at, other people can just do better in a lot of regards. Like, it's one of those, it's one of those things where it's like, you're not, like, this character isn't necessarily bad, but other characters are better. It's kind of that fighting game problem of like, why is everyone hate this character and say they're low tier? It's like, well, because all the stuff they do, somebody else does and then some. Mm. So it's like, that's kind of where I'm looking at with the monk thing. Uh, but do people sort of misuse them? That might. Yeah, that's probably true. Uh, and would I like Ken says to use halberds? Yes, I would like Ken says to use halberds. That'd be fun. Mm. Honestly, I'm, I I guess I'll give him the W for that last chunk. <laughs> All right. I mean, I gave it a dub, Matt. Yeah, yeah, same. I agree. Again, right. I, I hate the the optimizer people who are just like, oh, to get the best fucking optimized monk, you got to put him in full plate armor. And it's like, no, shut the fuck up. I mean, that might be I'm true. I'm sorry, but, but you were just, you were just, you were just, it, that, that defeats the whole purpose of the idea of a monk. I get it. It's a better optimization that I can deal with unart. And it's like, no, nah, you're missing the point, dude. I mean, play Paladin. Fuck you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to tell you. I hate you. I hate you when you do that. <laughs> uh, I mean, okay. I, I know who I know. This next one, I know. Lupo, this was you. I know this was you. Everyone knows this was you. I love you, bud. But ev everyone knew. Uh, the take is not all. But certain cantrips should be bonus actions in base, uh, in base D and D. Prestidigitation, like, minor illusion, thaumaturgy, druidcraft, message, etc. Why? Yeah. What does what, that even what do? What does that do? What does that do? Like, 
Um, I so the the argument is that they don't do enough to require them to be an action. Right, they're You're all sort of fill very minor roles. I under- combat, yeah, yeah. Like I get that that they don't do enough to warrant an action, but I I don't think making them a bonus like I don't think making them a bonus action is going to matter in any particular. Like I don't think that does anything really. It's just. Yeah. I like, mean, so sure, my argument is I guess that you if you want. make them bonus actions, you give them some level of viability in combat to do things interesting. Like if you're like, oh, you know, if you get into a fight with guards in a city and they're like, who are you? And then you're, you know, the combat starts because they're suspicious of you. And the wizard goes, oh, we're, you know, official like knights of the realm or whatever and uses prestidigitation to make a badge to, to trick them. That could get you out of combat. But you could already do that right now. Yeah. Uh, you could, but the idea would be like, if it doesn't work, I can cast mage armor and then use a cantrip. There's also that. It's the cast a spell, then use a cantrip. Uh, There's more cantrips that are bonus actions. You have more chances to cast a cantrip as a bonus action while casting a spell. Except that's not how that works. Yeah, it is. If you cast a spell of, oh. of first level or higher, the only other spells you can cast on your turn are cantrips with an action variant of, uh, with the requirement of bonus action. No. That's exactly how that works. It's not. Yes. It's the opposite. It's if you use your bonus action, you can only cast cantrips that require an action to cast. So, like, that's why most people are like, I cast Misty Step on my turn, and then and I can use cantrip. my turn to cast Firebolt. Yeah. It's literally the opposite. It's the, the, sp- the spell has to be a bonus action, and then the... Uh, action can has to cantrips be a cantrip. An action. Yeah, it has to be which an is action why cantrip. most of the time it's you know, fireball, uh, ray of frost, uh, ice yeah. knife. So like, uh, if you cast Elder healing, Blurs. you can do healing word. You can't do healing word and then um, can't do healing word and then guiding bolt. You have to do healing word and then searing flame, for example. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, and then actually, yeah, that's the other thing. I'm pretty sure rules is written. If you cast prestidigitation as a bonus action, you couldn't cast mage armor. Pretty, pretty sure it wouldn't. You literally can't. Well, no, rules because well, no, because it, 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 it's the bonus action thing. Even if it's a cantrip, so then I think it. I. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I don't. Yeah, I'm tr- yeah, I don't think I, so. Because I know, because the most. Again, I also going back to like you know, warlock. Like first turn, I cast hex, bonus action, and then my main action is Eldritch blasting somebody in the face. Right, but that's a cantrip. But yeah, but that's that's what I'm saying. But like as a, hmm. I because yeah, for, I don't know. I, I don't feel like looking up the rules right now. <laughs> I, I'm trying to find it. Um, bonus actions. Uh, okay. A spell you a cast thing. with a bonus action is especially oh, yep, yep, swift. I see it. You must use a bonus action on your turn to cast the spell, provided you haven't already taken a bonus action. You can't cast another spell during the same turn except for a cantrip with a casting time of one action. So even if you made them a bonus action, you couldn't even really... I mean, you could, like, bonus action, press to digitation, and then attack with your sword or something like that. That you could do. But, you know, like, sure, I get I guess this is a man. I guess this is a man. Like, I it, it doesn't really upend anything, but I don't know that it really does much either. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. I, I like I, it doesn't bother me that I, I went up to bat for it. Yes. But like, I don't care that much. Um, at one point, I was pretty passionate about it. But like one of those things, it's like. I think if your if your GM's sets they, cantrips to bonus actions, cool. I'll take advantage of it, but I'm not like gonna jump. Yeah, to I, for it. I I don't think you can have all cantrips be bonus actions because you get into some real murky water with that one. Yeah, I, I think mean, we literally changing. had that. For a I know while. we did, and 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 I think the only reason we didn't run into problems is probably because we didn't know how the other spell casting rules and stuff worked, so we probably just didn't realize we were messing up. Um, I forgot which one they're they're changing a couple of them. I think True Strike is a bonus action. True Strike from D and D's nights. No, True Strike. No one one D and D's nuts. No, True Strike is part of your attack. Oh, yep. what is um? It's sort what's of what's the one that gives you resistance. Uh, it's the one. It's the one that um, 
Blade War? It's the one that Earth Genasis get as a bonus action now. I do not remember. Oh. Blade yeah, War, I don't I remember. I don't think it's Blade War. Blade War, that was, yeah, yeah. Is it Blade War? I think, I, think I think they're changing Blade War to a bonus action generally now. Or 1D&D not. I could be, I could be wrong, but I thought I remembered. I think I'm, I'm, I was mixing that up with True Strike. No, no, yeah, uh, Blade Word. Extend your hand and trace a sigil in the air until the end of your next turn. You have resistance against bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I, think, I don't know if they're changing that to a bonus, though, but again... I think in the play test, they were playing around with it. I don't know if it's stuck. Again, though, it's like... You still have the yeah. other restrictions, so we'll see where that goes, uh, I guess. I, I mean, <laughs> personally, I think Blade Word should be a reaction. It feels like it should it, be. If you will, it's just because it's right. It's it is a weaker version of shield. You know, you're yeah. still taking the damage, but you're not taking as much damage. Right. That, were, that makes perfect sense to me. The only problem is, is Blade Wars is cantrip, though, right? Yeah, so you get it constantly. Yeah, so you could just do it permanently forever. It's the only problem. Uh, yeah, but that's what again, that's one of those things where it's like it's like, yes, you can do it forever, but or maybe maybe just give it resistance for the attack. For specific. one attack. Yeah, for yeah. like the 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 next incoming attack. I think I'm I yeah, I think that's fair. Make it a reaction, make it only one attack. Yeah. I mean, you could yeah. you're still in the scenario yeah, yeah. though where the person's just going to use blade ward every single turn no matter what. Well, mm -hmm. every uh, every turn I mean, they're being hit by that particular. Remember, it's only bludgeoning, slashing and piercing. Yeah, yeah. So any elemental shit, they're still right. getting wrecked. Right. I get yeah, that. Yeah. I don't yeah, I, I mean, uh, maybe I just wonder, like, I don't know, it just feels like that might get a little annoying. Because, like, shield, you have to actually make a choice because, you know, ammo count. But if it's a cantrip, yeah. you don't. Well, yeah, it's true. It's true. But you have to think about it this way, right? It's like if a, if a, uh, a like, level, a CR 19 berserker gets a brutal critical off on you, uh, or maybe not a brutal critical because that's automatically going to do like, yeah, it, you can't shield up a critical. But like if they roll super high, you're like, ah, shit, what do I do? Do I try to like, do I try to eat the damage and see if I make it out of the other end? Because like, he has several more attacks or do I throw up a shield and hopefully not take any damage? I think it's it's a it's a good I think it'd be a good way to a get that spell used ever because it's never getting used now. <laughs> um, Wait, but you wouldn't be having to make that strike with that choice with blade board because it's antrip just use it i don't have to think about what, I'm what i'm saying is is you'd have to think about using that or shield because the idea is do you are, are you going to attempt oh, being able to eat your damage or avoid it i mean i i personally would have used that a lot as django like i would have definitely had would to you play ever that game eat the damage if you know that shield is going to protect you shield lasts for the whole turn because i don't know you didn't always tell us what we rolled so I'd be being like, well, I don't know if if it would save me. Do I have to? Do you have to make the gamble. Oh, I mean, if you don't know, yeah, that's where you get into that weird thing of is the GM supposed to? tell? I told you guys, but I don't know if the GM is supposed to or not. To be honest, I believe it's a it's a discretionary thing. I don't know. But, I, I but also, but motherfucker, I told you guys every time you asked. What are you on about? <laughs> well, when we asked. Yeah, you. I say you got hit, and then you say, "What was the hit?" And I said twenty five, and you go, "Okay, I'm gonna shield it." Like I, I was gonna say, that's yeah, that's, that's always what normal. I did. What hell? So I, what? Uh, what do you want me to Unless tell you like the number rolling. every single attack? I do that personally. I'm not saying oh, you should have. That's a pain in the ass. I have to tell you exactly yeah. what the hit number is every attack. That's fucking nah. I just roll it open. That's fair. But yeah, even then, if you have, if you like, if you're fighting a monster that's got really swingy damage also a valid reason to do that i don't yeah. i i i guess yeah i mean i in the end it's a mad tank not bad not great uh, it is what it is i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna, I'm gonna give it the l <laughs> l okay yeah i just don't i just don't think it would affect anything enough to even really matter that's really where i'm at that seems like a meh like yeah that's what i mean like yeah, okay. I'm not offended by it, but I don't think it would affect things enough to really do anything. Damn, damn. Maybe, uh, all right, maybe, maybe I'll switch. I'll switch to a man then. Uh, no, no, Lupo. God damn it, Matt. Matt says you suck. <laughs> damn, Christ. How could you say something so mean? To him? This kind of fuck. 
Oh, here's one that's going to get me <laughs> tight. God damn it. Uh, uh-huh. <clears throat> Another one. Guns are fine for D&D, but are best when ammunition is a relatively rare resource. Let the cowboys and snipers have their 8d6 plus dex de- attacks, but also have it come at the cost of them knowing they've only got 17 bullets left. And the party is weeks away from a city, which may not even have any ammunition for them to buy. No, I disagree. Wait, no, I actually kind yes. of agree with this one. Um, <laughs> wait, if you yeah. have, wait, I, I disagree. Yeah, go for it, go for it. So uh, I, I think that like, obviously the damage that they're talking about is way inflated. And I don't even think guns should do that much damage because this is where Isaiah is going to hit you with some fucking facts. Okay. Guns only circumvented armor at their later stage of the Renaissance. Right, We're talking yeah. like revolvers and repeaters because you could yes. do enough damage to the weak points and to the weak points in the armor that you've set up with a previous shot to punch through it. Otherwise, I'm sorry, a gun is not getting through plate armor. It's just not. It was also not getting through really thick things like scalar plate. So guns are not this overpowered, indestructible, unstoppable god thing that people think they are, no matter what. Second of all. If you're talking about powder and shot weaponry, what? All you need is lead in a campfire, my guy. You don't even need lead. You could use any soft metal, really. Lead was just good because it was fucking heavy. So if you're going to let your character play a gunslinger and then take away their ability to actually use their gun, which is to say their ammo, what the fuck is the point of having the gun in the first goddamn place? There isn't one. And if another thing, if your thing is if your whole thing characters thing is that they're a sniper and they get one shot around and it does do 86 congratulations that's their one shot around a fighter with a flame tongue is doing double that i think what are you talking about i, I, I think you're misunderstood I, I don't want to tell you you're wrong but i think you're a little bit wrong that no, you're no, misunderstanding i know I, I, I understand what they're saying like the well, argument about guns in D&D is that you shouldn't have guns because they're overpowered no, and they're no, no. not hold, fair hold, and they're better than everything. Hold, else. hold, hold, hold on, hold on. I, no, no, no. That's not even what I, I What I think what this person is saying is that the thing is, if you want guns to be cool and interesting, because I kind of agree with the idea. If you want the guns to be cool and interesting and feel like a big imp- impactful thing, you know, because hypothetically a gun could potentially be better than a like a bow and arrow now yes i know it depends on what kind of guns we're talking about which is the other thing but then the idea is that a gun should be not as reliable or not be able to be used as often but it can do a big amount of i've said this before myself you have the guns there let the guns do more damage than everything else but have there be some kind of drawback now granted the drawback i usually say is reload time right that's the most common one which is to say like you know in D and D, it takes an action to reload or whatever. Whatever the point being is, they're like, you know, if you have uh, the repeater pistol, right? A, let's say a great sword does two d six, a repeater pistol does three d six damage, but you have to reload it, right? Like I, the idea that the gun is more powerful but has a drawback, I think makes a lot of sense, and that's kind of what that person is. This person is saying where they're like, if the ammo is limited but the gun does a shitload of damage. That is gun really good, but has a drawback. I, I get pro- what they're saying. Hold on, I hold do. on, hold on. I'm still going. I'm still going. The follow up to this is yes, I understand what you're saying, Isaiah. When people say guns, the thing is, is they're thinking about, you know, a lot of people are thinking about like a Winchester repeater rifle or a Colt six shooter, you know, or a fucking like, you know, a single shot bolt action rifle which are all much more modern, but those guns would literally punch through a piece of plate mail. I mean, depending on how thick it is and stuff, but you know, a guy with a Winchester repeater rifle could put some holes in the night with some plate armor, right? And that's where a lot of people's brain goes. A lot of people don't actually know if you were to have slightly more historically accurate to the time period, you know, weapons, what that, what the effectiveness of those would actually be a lot of people don't really know because people aren't familiar with like a breech loading and like a flint lock and like a fucking uh, or a match lock or any of that crap like a lot of people don't know how effective those were if they could or could not punch through armor and shit so yes you're correct in saying that if you have the more historically accurate guns they would be about as effective as a bow and arrow in a lot of regards but that's not that's well, not where people's brains are going, right? People, I, I know it's not. People want the bad people want the bad news from Critical Role. 
right? I, sure, fair enough. I, I get that too. But there are other ways, like, I'm sorry. Me personally, I don't really like the, you have a limited number of this resource and it ticks down throughout the day and there's really nothing you can do to get it back. I've said, I want mechanics in, in, in RPGs that fluctuate. Let me be the, the samurai from fucking 14. Let me start at something, build a meter up, spend those points, build the meter up, spend. That's just more interesting. And I know you have to talk about balance. That's not really what I'm talking about at the moment. I mean, yeah. but the worst thing is for you to have a character that you've centered around a thing and then be like, well, that thing that you built your character around, you just can't do that thing in the next town because you can't afford to find the. Uh, yeah, I, no. I mean, I, I don't think I don't think the idea that the resource is so limited that the players potentially just can't find it at all. I don't like that. But the idea that you have so many bullets, like your gun is really good, right? Really effective. Again, like three or four D6 damage or whatever. Your gun's quite good. And traveling from town A to town B, you have to keep an eye on your ammo and ration your resource a little bit because you could potentially run out. But once you get to town B, you can reliably get ammo back. That's I think that's more reasonable. The idea of like they might not be able to find ammo. I don't I don't that part, I think, is dumb. I, I, I don't think that makes sense. But, you know, in the same way that the ranger using arrows, you know, traveling from point A to point B didn't buy enough arrows oh crap, now I can't use my bow. Like, there is the potential for that to be kind of interesting. But again... Well, so, kind of, because you can just make arrows. Well, I don't... I, I believe can't, it says somewhere in the DMG it, that rules is written, you can just no. make simple ammunition like stones for a sling. I, I don't believe it does. But, regardless of that, the basic idea... I'm not even... I'm not getting into the, the, the nuances of like, well, fictional, you could do this... Whatever. The basic idea, the premise of like, it's a more limited thing, but it's more powerful, but limited in resource, I don't think is inherently bad. But if you just have a player who just wants to essentially play a ranger, but a ranger with a gun, then yeah, you could just say, you know, it does the same amount as your as a longbow or whatever, but his gun. Yeah, you, you can. And that's fine. And you could just let that rock. But if you want to make the, I guess really what it comes down to, if you want the guns to feel genuinely like their own thing, like they're different from just using a crossbow, for example, that's where you get into the realm of playing with the resource and the damage and the reload and stuff so, like that. Right, but you know what you could do with that, though? That would be really interesting. I mean, there's a lot of things you could do. I, like if you wanted to make a gun really interesting and not just make it do big damage, Cause that's the, that's the like lowest hanging fruit. Like well, th lowest hanging is make it do big damage. Well, big damage makes or you the make most it do, sense, or, I think. Or do the Mercer thing where it has the highest range. Which I don't yeah. even particularly agree in because that didn't make any sense. It was cool, but that didn't make any sense. Um, well, the highest range thing also wouldn't probably wouldn't end up being. Uh, I made it pretty useful when I played a gunslinger. Cause I'm, you can be on the other. It's when it's got when something's got a range of a thousand feet. You are literally at the other end of the map while the like you're just run backwards and fire, and the barbarian can eat all the damage, and you're perfectly safe. Um, but like something that like yeah, you have damage range. The misfire thing that Mercer did, which was fantastic. I love that. See, but I like that. But my problem with the misfire thing is the misfire is a downside, but it didn't feel like there was any really good upsides. Like he didn't Percy didn't do like extra damage or anything like, you know, like well, again. So the, the pepper box did a D10, you know, as a, a one handed sword. weapon. But it was one handed. It did a D10 one hand. Yeah, so it was the only weapon in the game. As far as I'm aware of that does a D10 one handed. Is that a big deal? Yeah, because that's a long sword and it was a light item, so you could dual wield D10s. I don't know that you I don't know that it was a light item, but regardless, I, I don't know that it being one handed necessarily was a heat. Considering he only ever used. Well, just right, to be fair, just because Percy didn't use it in a way that would have made it far more effective doesn't mean that it can't be more effective. Sure. Um, Because he did have two guns at one point and didn't dual wield the pepper boxes, which I probably wouldn't have done either. I'm a bad news purist. Uh, big guns are fun. But like the the end point being 
the cool way to do a gun is to make give sure give them good damage i would say give them higher than normal damage lower than normal range uh give them a misfire and the coolest thing that guns did at the time was shock and awe tactics like maybe impose disadvantage on on people like if you fire at somebody if they approach you that round to attack they have disadvantage because they are you just scared the shit out of them with the boomstick like you can start doing things with with like and then you can get into like really cool formations where you have literal pike and shot like we did in history that's like some sick shit you could run that's what would make guns more interesting and guns were really good because anyone could use them they didn't yes. take a lot of training yes so very little at all like so the people's like well not everybody would have like firearm proficiency they didn't need it a bow and arrow is very difficult to learn how to use yes. it takes years and years and years of training a gun is like two days <laughs> i mean a gun is easier to learn than a bow although you do still need to learn how to use it. it's not like to you do you like it but uh, uh, like you could again reasonably learn how to shoot straight in two days like that there's there's a lot of evidence to support that crossbows too crossbows were super easy to learn how to use i don't know i i feel like that probably would take a little bit longer with old fire i mean today definitely that's true my question i wonder about older firearms but whatever yes they were easier to use was obviously a benefit in the same way that you know spear is easier to use um i it, yeah, uh, sure. That's another way you could do it. I think the thing the, the, the thing is, is like there's lots of ways to do it. You know, like there's lots of ways to come at the guns thing. There there are. In, and, in my opinion, I just think limiting the resource and we don't I don't know how much this person is talking about limiting the resources. To right, be fair. That's yes. the thing, right? It, it, it's a, all the, evidence says it's it delicate. Set, it's not enough. It, like it's very little, right? The like. You've got 17 bullets left. You're weeks away from a city and the next one you're at might not even have it. That all insinuates that the actual ammo you have is very little. Sure. Yeah. Um, so that's why I, I'm going to call this an L take. Unfortunately, I think it is kind of a spicy take. Uh, I would say it's guns in general are spicy take. Yes. I uh, mean, I, it's probably a spicy take in the general D&D community. I would say yes. But L's. I'm going to say it's a W take, not necessarily for the take itself, but in the fact that the person is thinking in the right direction in terms of they're thinking about how can I take this thing that a lot of people want to use and put it in the game that a lot of people want and make it feel different than other things that are in the game. Like they're along the right lines, not the best executional idea. But I think they're thinking in such a fashion that, like, you, you're, you're on to something. Keep cooking. Like, mm. keep stewing that pot true. a little. And true, true, like, pack magic. Like, you know, it's a different resource. Yeah, essentially. Yeah, it's a different it's a different resource that achieves a slightly different thing. You know, it feels a little different. Because, you know, I would be a little disappointed if it's like, yeah, you can have a gun. Just reflavor your crossbow. I'm like, well, that's not as fun, but I'll take it. You know, like. No, I, I, I do I want them I to want feel it different. to be functionally and mechanically different. At I least do. a little bit. I, I, yeah, it's just the, uh, yeah, I don't like the limited resource thing. First, Matt, what do you think? L dubs meh. Uh, meh. Matt doesn't okay, care. So we about have a three way disagreement. Uh huh. I feel like moving this to meh is the only way to resolve it. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll put this as a spicy meh take. Uh, Which it's yeah. funny. It's kind of an oxymoron. It's a, it's like jumbo shrimp. A little bit. Look, Matt, um, Matt just doesn't care about the gun discussion ever. Never not has. really now. <laughs> Matt's not emotionally invested in that one. Also, uh, the pepper box is not a light weapon, by the way. Was it not? Okay, no. fair enough. The only light weapon. Correct. The only light weapon among the list, at least on D and D Beyond, is the palm pistol. The only one. I am so happy right now. Oh. This is the one I wanted. I know who posted this. Uh, oh, oh Jesus. God. Yeah, so. Bro, uh, what? Too many casters. Fuck? Sorcerer, oh. wizard, druid, cleric, bard, paladin, warlock, ranger, and artificer. 
Subclasses like Arcane Trickster and Eldritch Knight giving strictly martial classes a magic option feels like an incentive that Wizards of the Coast is pushing. It seems that Barbarians are the only pure martial classer class that doesn't use slots for magic, they but do. rather once daily abilities with descriptions of a spell. Though there are in, uh, distinctions such as spell lists depending on class and subclass, along with category casters, full, uh, half and quarter, it all still relies on magic. Though this is a personal belief, I do wish for more low fantasy settings from uh, Wizards of the Coast pre-written adventures. There's something more fantastic about juxtaposing the archaic and mundane with Jerry the Testicular Sorcerer strolling in and twisting the Count's left nut, only to add a twinning spell to twist the right one too, you know. In all, TLDR, because I know y'all knuckle draggers get smooth looking at ones and zeros on a screen, less casters and more marshals. In parentheses, don't, no, also, don't, Josh, don't, fuck Mirai off. Nikki is still hot trash even after a rewatch. <laughs> Ain't no way you're going to defend that Basura Blanquito. Uh-uh, don't try to counter-argue with them dry-ass lips. Get yourself some water and lip balm. Dry lip having ass. And parentheses. What the fuck? <laughs> All right, well, just, a... just for everyone listening, this is from Brett. Just so we're clear. <laughs> I, I I'm not going to call but... anyone else out, but I will call out Brett. This is from Brett. Yeah, this is from Brett. I know it's from Aww. Brett. I asked him. We know it's from Brett Damn. from that last parentheses bit. Also, did my man's go back and recently rewatch Mirai Nikki? What the fuck? <laughs> I guess he did. He must have. Damn. That's okay, Josh. I'm with you. I also, like Mirai Nikki. Also, I do. I do have. I I do have chapstick. Fuck off. Why he coming after my lips like that? God damn. What the shit? <laughs> I, I actually don't know if I agree or disagree with this take, to be honest. Uh, it's kind of hard to think about it with that uh, asterisk. I, it is funny with the... I, okay, uh, can I just... Can I just... Uh, I know this is sort of going against the rules of these being honest. I'm really surprised that this is coming from Brett. Yes, correct. I was I, I think this is fascinating. Yep. I'm shocked to realize... Because when I was first reading it, I didn't think it was Brett. And then I saw the bit at the bottom and I was like, oh, well, now I know who this is. I'm really uh, Brett. I don't know. Uh, just, uh, slap yourself in here if you want to defend yourself. But like, I'm actually just quite shocked this is coming from him. Um, but like, I kind of agree. I think. I, I think I, I generally I do as well. agree. I, I yeah. I think the the disparity between casters and non casters. Yes, that is true. That is imbalanced for sure. I am slightly confused about the statement um, uh, giving strictly martial classes a magic option feels like an incentive Watsi is pushing. Not sure what he means by that. I don't know if their incentive was supposed to be a different word or something. Um, yeah, uh, so like yeah, it's a personal I, I, I mean, here's the thing. I don't think you're going to get more low. I don't think you're going to get low fantasy stuff from Watsi. I just don't think that's going to happen, unfortunately. So you might have to kind of give up on that dream a little bit. But yes, I, I do think magic is sort of. It is, I think, handed out a little too much. It's it's just like, here's a piece of candy. Here's another piece of candy. Would you like some candy? Like, yeah, it, it does get passed around a lot. And and I think bread is also honestly the mo the best part of the whole thing is there's something more fantastical about juxtaposing the archaic and the mundane with Jerry, the testicular sorcerer, <laughs> um, because also, you did only to add a twinning spell to twist the right one, too. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> good. That's a good one. <laughs> Pretty good. That was a good one. So, I'm sorry. No matter what we do, this takes a W. I mean, Brent gets a W just for writing the way he wrote this. is <laughs> Honestly, yeah. honestly, fabulous prose, good sir. Uh, I, I think, but I think the thing that the crux of it, yeah, I think he's right in that there is something more fantastic about juxtap juxtaposing the archaic and the mundane with the crazy magical I do like that, I think, better a lot of the time and does think make things feel more magic in the very classical sense in terms of like fairy tales, right? Because, you know, fairy tales is all about the idea of the world is weird and magical, but people don't have a good understanding of it. And then every once in a while, human beings run into the weird magical stuff 
and we don't get it because it's not a part of our daily lives. And then you do weird things like leave out bowls of milk so the fairies don't burn your laundry and steal your house or whatever. And nobody knows why you do that, but that's the thing you do because fairies like milk for some reason. You know, like I do actually like that vibe a lot. So I, I definitely I, I agree. I think I think I don't think you're going to get it from D&D, but I do think games should lean into it. Like, I'm, you know, reading through the Black Company books, the Black Company books do that a lot where uh, the a lot of the main characters are just normal dudes but they do have magical stuff around them. And one thing that's particularly always interesting is that two of the characters in the black company are wizards, but the main character is never anyone who's magical like that. So when the wizard characters are doing weird shit, everybody's like, I don't know, they're just doing weird shit. And then a bunch of bats flew out from some guy's mouth for some reason. I don't know what goblins doing, but he's casting something, you know? And it, it does. It adds to like weird mythical. It also makes it like magic a little creepier, a little like stranger. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I didn't. Yeah. I think this is the first time where I will um, say, hey, uh, you know, if you're interested, I actually know of a few other systems that you can perhaps look at and either steal for your D&D game and or, you know, swap over, such as Dungeon Crawl Classic or uh, my mind is being blown OSR. Right now. My mind yeah, is right. also being crazy. blown. Yeah, crazy. Uh, although OSR, they, they, they do the low fantasy a thousand times better than D and D. This is especially true. now Wizards of the Coast right now. Dungeon Crow Classics, a particularly good one. Although uh, OSR is a is a movement, it's not any one particular system. Oh, is oh what um, fuck. There's the one. Are you thinking of a specific? I think the old school essentials. Then oh, I old think that's school the, essentials. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. that's what I'm thinking yes. of. Yeah. Uh, also, a um, recent one that a lot of people have been liking uh, that does the lower magic and the juxtaposing uh, Shadow Dark. Yeah, good one. I heard a lot of good things of Shadow Dark. Yeah. I'm, a- I'm actually looking at. Um, I don't know if it's low fantasy, but or low fantasy or low magic, but uh, Dragon's Bane. I do. Not I think know. it's just D and D. I think it's just. I think that's honestly just more D and D, but like I don't know. I don't know. Different. I don't know that one. But also, my mind yeah. is a little blown that Matt just suggested other games. Yeah. What universe do we live right. in? Yeah. That's why I was sitting there like, wow, I can't believe Hell froze over. Hell <laughs> <laughs> froze I'm over. Gonna, I'm actually going <laughs> to. Matt's like, I actually have I have some suggestions for you. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, so, Matt, do you give Brett the W on this one? Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Uh, especially, honestly, like, especially after Tasha's with the power creep and everything yeah. going to five E, like, yeah. yeah, people want cool new subclasses, so they're like, all right, more magical sub subclasses, like a rogue that gets the power from undead, yeah, or yeah, like why could uh, it- fucking a fighter who gets magic from runes like yeah you know i mean i love rune knight but that is a good point no like, same it's the best fighter but why can't we get shit more like mastermind rogue where it's very explicitly a non-magical subclass there's not a lot yeah, of that is uh, there huh no is it probably fantasy yeah hey yo is that is insane he's commenting <laughs> in our chat <laughs> god damn it Brett. he better respond to the latter half I I can't with this man. Oh, but it's fine. Look, it, it, he comes for you with uh, Mirai Niki, and he comes for Ant uh, about his streamer chair. You know, it's just it's just one of the many things. Brett. I don't think the chair is equivalent, but sure. I, I don't know. You'd be surprised at how many times he comments <laughs> about it. Damn. It's quite frankly a ridiculous amount. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we'll call that a uh, W take. I'll we'll call it spicy. Uh mm. Honestly, that is like that is a pretty moderately hot take. Like, is it? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Well, because I, I think people like the the really innately magical side of D and I think people like that's one of the things that draw people in is that there's so much magic in the air. But to be maybe. like, it's good. But I think where we've we've sort of we've crossed the far. line somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, that's a pretty. Hey. I call that a pretty. Honestly, that's probably the best. Just flat out the best take we have. It, it, it feels like the most well thought out one. Mm-hmm. I don't even know about well, but like the one I agree with the most, or or, or the most the most articulated one, it, mm. in Brett's special kind of way. All right, uh, lads. So I will yeah. say, we've done twenty so far. We're two hours and twenty Damn. minutes in. Damn. 
Nice. We got 12 left. What are we thinking? I mean, I, 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 I don't, I'm not trying to go. I, I don't feel like we're going to go two. another hour. Yeah, I don't know. That's fine. I think, right. I think we will cut it off here. here. But, I mean, it was decent. That was, that was a solid one to end on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, I, I would have been so sad. I wasn't going to force it, but I would have going to be so fucking sad if we didn't get this take. <laughs> mm. All right. Mm-mm-mm. So what was our what was our final countdown verdicts? Final count. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven W takes, four of okay. which were spicy. Uh, we have let's see six meh takes, one of which were spicy, and two straight up L takes, only one of which was spicy. I'm almost a little disappointed. I, you know, I, I didn't get yeah. as mad as I felt like I was gun. Uh, yeah. There are others in here that would have got you mad for sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe we lucked out. Yeah, maybe mm. didn't get the ones that were coming for me in particular. Oh. We did get the one that <laughs> came for Isaiah in particular. Uh, yes, they did. They did. Yeah. The gun one. Uh-huh. The gun one. Yes. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny. I read that one. I'm like, this is going to tilt the shit out of me. Bet money on it. And uh, I was right. It did tilt the dog shit out of me. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 Here you go. All right. Uh, Josh, you want to do our closing out the statements? For the fans? Uh, news, you know, listeners. Twitter is still burning to the ground slowly but surely, but you can still follow us on it. Yeah. Do it that what you will. Any closing thoughts in general, boys? Um, you know, not as hot, not as hot as I thought. Yeah, I almost, I almost, you know, I almost, motherfuckers, I almost wish you were being a little more savage. Go ballistic, go buck wild. Yeah. I don't know. I, I was waiting for someone to be like, I don't know, like, yeah. Band, band fighter or band magic fighter. items are too powerful. Magic items are too too weak. Band fighter, oh my god, <laughs> it's too yeah. strong. Too many attacks. But we also, I like any- I like I like people having some articulate, actual thoughts. So yeah. It's, yeah, it's good. It's good to know not everyone is just uh a goober. Yeah, basically, yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty mm-hmm. much. <laughs> Is it? All right. Uh, uh, yeah. No, I mean, could they have been spicier? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I was there were a few groups that I, I sent this to where I was like, please. I beg you. <laughs> Give me. Mm-hmm. Oh, you can say some outlandish shit. Please just don't put like racial slurs or something. In it. I beg oh, you, I don't mean, do it. And I was very happy <laughs> that they acquiesced to my request. <laughs> yeah. Because it could have gotten, re- <laughs> it would have required a lot of editing on my part. I <laughs> yeah. just didn't want to. Do. That's fair. That's fair. I'm very thankful that I I didn't have to smash my head into a wall. Uh, oh my bad. We had a wait, that's a correction. We had eight takes for meh, two of which were for, for hot because the guns when we we dropped in meh. Oh uh, yeah. True. Yeah. All right. I think that's about it. Uh, we'll probably do a part two of this, like a quick, maybe half session in the next couple weeks. Probably not next week, but yeah. Okay. I'll do this again someday. All right, y'all. That's been us. We'll see you. Die for him. Peace. Die for him. Die for him. <laughs> Stop. You violated the law. <laughs>